So, Madam Chair, if you want to, uh, you could go ahead and read the preamble. Uh, that would just uh, provide our audience and all of our members the purpose that we're having the right, virtual that's meeting perfect. today. That's perfect. Okay, so thank you all for joining us for the Raleigh Transit Authority meeting today on Thursday, May 14th, 2020. Uh, the governor's issued executive orders requiring individuals to remain in their homes except for certain activities, closing many businesses to the public and prohibiting many gatherings which do comply with its terms. Uh, because of the risk to the public that would arise from continued in-person meetings, Pursuant to NCGS 166A 19.24, the city's uh, converted Raleigh Transit Authority meetings to a remote electronic format for the duration of the state of emergency. Um, so that is why we are taking time to meet this way. Uh, we have a few different th things that will be different as far as the flow of the meeting because we have to do this virtually. So we'll do a roll call and each person would say, I, is that correct, David? Instead of us doing introductions, we'll do one roll call for the whole board of directors. And each person says I when their name is announced. Uh, if you are needing to ask a question or make a motion or speak up, if you're on the screen, you would have to raise your hand uh, high enough up to your shoulder level so that you can be seen so that uh, the staff on that end can acknowledge you and bring you in for question. Anytime that you speak up in the um, convening, please acknowledge yourself so that we know who's speaking uh, because all of the pictures aren't gonna be at the, on the screen at the same time for each person. And that's also gonna be for record keeping purposes. Um, did I miss anything, David? I don't think I did. So what we'll start by doing, um, David, can we go ahead and start doing the roll call? Yeah. Um, you're still muted. David, we can't hear you. You're muted if you're talking. All right. So uh, how about now? Yes, we hear you now. Very good. So uh, I, I will, uh, Madam Chair, I'll let you run through and uh, just do the roll call. Um, and we're going to make sure that we... Uh, so everyone is uh, absent or present. All right, thank you. All right, Nathan Spencer. Here, aye. Karen Ridge. Here, here, sorry, I was muted. Oh, no problem, Michael Stevenson. I'm here. Christopher Jones. Daniel Coleman. Present. Morris Cook. Aye. Brian Burnett. Joshua Gill. Sarah Prado. Hi. Here. Robert Owens. Here. Here. Uh, do we have a city council liaison? And I, Tallulah Pay Omokaya is also present. Madam Chair, since uh, we do have six, uh, I'm sorry, we have seven regular members, so we do have a quorum. Uh, we also have uh, two new alternate members, uh, which either you can uh, announce or I'll be happy to as well. Yes, our uh, the alternate members did acknowledge themselves. That would be uh, Miss Sarah, who is one our new member. Welcome to the RTA, and Joshua. Well, he's no, he's no longer an alternate, but Mister Mister Owens, who is now also a new member of the RTA. Welcome. Thank That's you, right, Miss Sarah Pardo and Mister Robert Owens. Yes, welcome to the new members. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be with you. Thank you. 
So I guess we'll be calling this meter to meeting to order at three forty two PM. Good. That'd be fine. And Madam Chair, what we may have to do is we may go ahead and run through some presentations. And uh, if we need to go uh, into uh, the votes um, simultaneously after the presentations, we can do that. Um, that might be the easiest thing for us to do uh, at the current time. Whatever works best. That would be my recommendation. And uh, so I'll let you go ahead uh, with the preliminary matters on the agenda. Okay, can you share the screen? Yes, we will bring up the agenda in just a moment. The uh, preliminary matters, uh, the next uh, was A was call to order, B was introductions, and C is revisions or additions to the agenda. And staff does have one recommendation for revision or additions to the agenda. That is where we would take items 3A and 3B and flip those. Uh, 3A is the Wake Transit Plan FY21 update, and 3B is the COVID-19 update. Um, since uh, the item just before that is talking about the Wake Transit budget, uh, we thought it would make sense for us to uh, actually the overall Go Raleigh and Wake Transit budget, we thought it would make sense for us to add those two right after each other because they will complement each other. Okay. So David, are you saying oh. one B and one? We would just request that we uh, flip item 3A and 3B. So we'd have 3B first and then okay. item 3A. Okay. All right. All right, so those would, does anybody have any other um, additions or revisions that they would like uh, on the agenda for the meeting today? Hey, can I ask a question? Right. Where is the Roman numeral two? There may have been some confusion because there was an original agenda that came out that did have those uh, uh, flipped. And uh, someone may have, if they pulled the one offline, uh, that may have been corrected. So my apologies. Uh, the one that you can see on the screen, 3A, uh, would be the Wake Transit Plan update. So we will keep it in that order. My apologies. I'm just saying the Roman numeral 3 is above Wake Transit Plan, but there's no Roman numeral 2. You know, you got that Roman numeral 1. It's preliminary. No, Danny, he's saying that that was a mistake. There was a, an agenda that went out originally that they made some adjustments to, and in making the adjustments, the two might have gone away because performance reports would have been three. So he's just okay. keeping it as three since it's as three on the agenda that was sent to us, and it's as three on the screen before us. Thank you. Thank you. A very minor change there, but just wanted to make that clarification for anybody that had that old agenda. Our apologies. And then we have preliminary items, uh, matters item D. Okay, can we, since we're up and we have the agenda, can we just go into the meeting? Uh, we can certainly uh, go ahead and get started. Um, with the uh, preliminary uh, item D, public comment, uh, we did have one public comment come in, and uh, so I'll be happy to share that either now or at a time, uh, Madam Chair, that you would like. Um, we can, okay, so we had our public comments uh, go out, and uh, people had an opportunity to email in their public comments since we're doing this virtually, and it's kind of a open closed, I guess, situation. I uh, just want to make that clarification. So um, if we're there, we can go ahead and just jump into it. All right, sounds good. So uh, for clarification, you would like to go ahead and just review that now? Yes. Very good. So uh, I'm not going to read the uh, full comment. We will get that out to the board uh, in written format. Uh, but generally, the comment was uh, there was concern regarding the lack of food and beverage at Go Raleigh Station. 
um, wasn't related to anything to a particular item on the agenda, um, but it did state that, um, that we did not have drink machines and snack machines as found in other bus terminals. Um, uh, they were uh, just basically stated they were puzzled why the station doesn't provide uh, that amenity, and they wanted us to bring that to the attention of the RTA board. Uh, so we'll certainly follow back up with the citizens. Um, we would uh, be willing to discuss this uh, in the committee, uh, but historically um, we have not provided vending at our station because our station is wrapped by retail, um, and we have a number of the number of establishments within the perimeter of, uh, of the station that have uh, convenience stores and food and beverage and lots of opportunities for that. Many of those are convenience stores and actually uh, would probably have pricing better than we could provide in a vending environment. So um, that's the reason that historically we haven't done that. Uh, but again, we, uh, that's the reason that we do not currently have that vending. Uh, we are not competing with our surrounding neighbors. Thank you for that, David. All right, so we're going to move on to staff action items. And the first action item Madam up Chair. is the ADA functional test. Madam Chair, I had a question about that. Okay. Uh, I had my hand raised. Could you see? Can you see me or not? Sorry. No, I can see you. Um, so let's let's. I can see. You. Well, I can see you now because, but okay. on the screen. So we just need to make sure that we're keeping up. I guess when people raise their hand. Okay. Quick question for uh, David about the vending. Can you acknowledge yourself? I'm sorry. Can you acknowledge yourself before you speak so they can have you on record? Good idea. This is Michael Stevenson. Good afternoon. Um, are, is food food and drink allowed on buses? So we do request that um, all food and beverage containers be closed while on the bus. Uh, that doesn't mean that someone with a cup of coffee that has a tight lid that has a, uh, that is sipping coffee is not going to be allowed to ride ever. Um, an open hot coffee container would certainly uh, be something that we would be concerned about. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, the bus says no food or beverage. We don't want open food and beverage containers on the vehicle. Again, there are coffee containers that are spill-proof, and uh, so there's that fine line there of 100% uh, of yes and 100% no, um, but generally that is our rule, and that is posted, that no open food or beverage containers. Yeah, I'm just wondering if having Vindy would also create more litter and trash around the station and in the buses as well. Just a comment. That's definitely a possibility. But like I said, I think that uh, David is absolutely right. With all the shopping and retail, especially convenience stores around the Go Raleigh station, there wouldn't really be a point in putting a vending machine um, in a, putting a vending machine there. I mean, I guess it's, it's if somebody wants snacks, if there's an option for us to put up some signage to direct people to the convenience store, if they need something, I think that that would be a good solution to that. But um, I definitely agree with you, your assessment, David. We can work on something of that nature for sure. Make sure the information booth is uh, uh, informed as well as uh, has information on what type of uh, food and beverage opportunities are around right at the station. All right, perfect. Are there any other questions? Well, I'm a little lost. Was this all about having some? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you have to kind of introduce yourself when you speak. Sorry. I'm Daniel. Sorry. Daniel, I don't have a video to raise. What was this all about? Are we going to put a kind of, are we going to put refreshments or something around our uh, stations? Uh, in public comment, somebody emailed in a comment saying that. Uh, they wanted to have vending machines at the Go Raleigh station at Moore Square because other locations have vending machines and things like that. And David was just making a comment that there's a lot of retail around the station, including convenience stores where people can buy like snacks or juice or chips cheaper than what we would wind up selling them for in a vending machine. So I was just, we were just suggesting maybe putting up signage. Um, and Michael was making the suggestion that it's a possibility or just asking the question if that would increase uh, littering 
and trash at the location if we had, you know, if we did. Just as a recap. What, 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 what all the sites was the uh, respondent referring to when he said uh, that they're offered other places? What, what, what was that relative? What was the context of the statement in that regard? And where what was he comparing operations to to say that? Sorry, Madam Chair, was the question what locations was the respondent or citizen referring to as other stations? Yeah. Yes. David, thank you. Uh, specifically within this one, um, it was referring to the Durham bus terminal, uh, but the okay. Durham bus terminal does not currently have retail opportunities around it. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to look at context. Thank you. And before I go too far out on a limb, uh, Durham is changing quickly. So that could have changed in the short period of time uh, that I haven't been there. Uh, but historically, they have not had the type of retail wrap uh, uh, station um, that we've encountered in downtown Rock. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. If there aren't any other questions uh, in regards to the public comment, uh, we're going to move forward with the staff action items. So action item one is the AD. Let me pause to make sure there's no comments. Okay. Actually, ADA yeah. so, so, yeah, I have one question. This is Sarah Prado. All right. Hi, Sarah. Um, hi, Eunice. How are you doing? Um, I just had a question. I'm not uh, fully familiar with the Moore Square station, but is there water fountains available there? Uh, perhaps like that's what this person is referring to, getting access to a beverage just easily at the station. Um, uh, so we do have a water fountain right by our bike rack. Um, uh, the bike share program is on the uh, Blunt Street side of the facility. And right by that facility, uh, there is a public water fountain at that location. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, moving on to the first staff action item, which is the ADA functional testing. All right, uh, our staff resource today is Mr. David Walker, and I'll turn it over to David. Thank you. Good afternoon, David Walker. I'm the transportation supervisor for Go Raleigh Bus and Bus Facilities uh, within our transportation department and transit division. Uh, you can refer to your agenda packet. We do have a full write-up regarding the ADA um, functional testing that we're going to be talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, sure. There we go. Change the slide there. So just a, a bit of background. Uh, City of Raleigh provides complimentary paratransit services to our citizens uh, with disabilities. Uh, those citizens do have to go through an application process to become eligible. And we currently have a third party vendor that provides those functional tests. Uh, we receive applications, the third party vendor reviews the application, calls the citizen in for an interview, and then follows up with a functional test to determine that uh, citizen's eligibility and whether or not they are able to participate in the program. So the current contract that we have for these services expires over the summer. Uh, we posted an RFP in March of this year, and we received two proposals. A selection committee reviewed and scored those pr proposals during the month of April. And Selection committee was comprised of staff from the city transportation department and also from the town of Cary, uh, their ADA uh, program as well. Uh, the, the panel came to a unanimous decision to make an award based on the evaluation criteria that was provided in the RFP. And the current provider is MTM Incorporated. Uh, they are one of the largest providers of this type of service in the, in the country. And we're recommending that the Transit Authority uh, award a contract of uh, five years with a not to exceed cost of $1.2 million. Uh, that equates to about $240,000 annually. 
And I will note that about half of these costs are fixed and the other half are variable. And the variable part is dependent upon the number of applications that are processed. They receive a, a fixed fee for each application that's processed. And uh, the, the dollar amount was based on about 1,000 applications. So with that, uh, we'll turn it back over to the chair and see if there's a recommendation to approve. I have a question. Or we'll take any questions. I do have a question. Um, who had this contract? Is this the first time? Well, I know this is not the first time we put out a contract like this. Who normally, who's had this contract before them, before now? Uh, MTM does hold the current contract. And we only got two proposals in when we sent out an RFP? That is correct. Uh, and, and just as a side note, um, MTM has been the, the vendor for five years. They received an initial five-year contract. And on that initial uh, RFP five years ago, we only received two proposals at that time as well. Who was the other contract that, uh, the other proposal? I believe the name of the company is IPS Link, and they're based out of Florida. Were they the ones that submitted last time too? Or was they it a are. different company? It was the same two uh, proposers. This is Karen Ringe. Um, you said it was a unanimous decision. Does that mean that uh, staff is satisfied with the performance for the last five years of the current contractor? Or, and have we received any complaints about them? I'm not aware of any complaints. Uh, I can say that staff has been very satisfied. Uh, the company has been very responsive to any uh, requests that staff has had uh, to make changes or additions or uh, you know, small scope adjustments to the services that they're providing. Uh, so we have been very satisfied with their performance. Uh, this is Sorry, this is Nathan Spencer. Um, the uh, the testing that they do, is it, uh, is, how does it work and um, is it complicated enough that a local vendor would not be able to do it and, and that's the reason why two national-based companies are applied? Um, there, there actually is a local vendor that provides these services for uh, another uh, regional partner. Uh, staff reached out to that company and ensured that they were, uh, made sure that they were aware that we had our proposal uh, uh, out for bid and they chose not to submit a bid. That, that company is based in Durham. Um, this is Tallulah. I have one more question. Just piggybacking on Karen's question. Has there been any complaints from riders about any of the service since they've held the contract? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, the only reason that we might receive a complaint would be if someone was denied eligibility and there is a, an appeal process for those persons to go through. Uh, we do have occasional uh, appeals, um, but they're, they're few and far between. Okay, thank you. Can, can I ask a question to Madam Chair? What, who, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the name. Uh, you know, I can't raise my hand. I wanted to ask a oh, question. Okay, it's Okay. <clears throat> uh, would there be any changes with this, with the, uh, considering the uh, new uh, policies that we have for dealing with uh, this post uh, virus uh, environment? Anything in, in that we can anticipate that may uh, cause this contract to have to be adjusted or uh, unforeseen? Have we anticipated any unforeseen, or is this thing pretty? Uh, standard and it doesn't matter about any kind of protective gear or anything like that. You're, you were breaking up a little bit, but if I, I think what I heard you ask was, are we making any adjustments to our functional testing process based on current conditions? Right, right. I'm, 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 off, I'm off speaking now. But uh, yes, I was just wondering, you know, um, 
were they becoming what a change order to to meet some um, something that we uh, may see coming down the pike, but we weren't able to quantify it to put it into the RFP as it is now. Or it's just pretty cut and dry stuff. I mean, it's 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 fairly cut and dry. We have made some some changes to the the way we're processing applications, obviously based on the current conditions. The the third party um, that holds the contract today, uh, what we're doing is as we receive applications, they, that application has been reviewed, and then she sets up a uh, telephone interview. She conducts that interview, and then a decision is made um, to provide temporary eligible eligibility, say, for the next six months to a year until such time that hopefully we're past these current conditions and we can bring them in for a full uh, eligibility review. But that's not going to come. The cost is already incorporated into the bid that uh, we, we want to award to the to uh, MM whatever. M M M T M. Right. That. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, David. No problem. All right. So, are there any additional questions? Because this is something that uh, we're we're going to have to vote on whether or not we go ahead and, and make the approval for our support for their contract. Well, I don't mind making a motion that we move uh, move uh, move this and adopt it, <clears throat> but I'm not the most informed person on the process either. Well, if anyone makes a motion, they have to like just uh, acknowledge yourself while you make the motion. Daniel Coleman makes the motion to approve uh, the recommendation from staff for MTM management to uh, be awarded the, uh, the assessment uh, contract. Motion, Spencer, second. All right, it's been moved and properly seconded. Uh, are you all ready for the vote? Or are there any questions? Are we not voting on everything at the end? Do we not talk about that at the beginning? That we were going to vote on all the presentations at the end? Do we need I, think to wait? Our, I think we've gotten our technical difficulties uh, straightened out. We can, can see all the members on the screen at this time. So if you want to go ahead and conduct the vote, uh, that would be appropriate. And we'll record it here. You can't see me, right. but I can tell you. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's been moved and properly seconded. Are there any questions? All right. All in favor, please acknowledge by raising your hand. Karen Rengvis, aye. Daniel Coleman votes aye. <laughs> Michael Stevenson votes aye. And David, are you ready for the, and all opposed, please uh, vote now by raising your hand as well. Or by speaking up. All right, it sounds like uh, it's approved. Uh, we, we approve the motion to uh, approve the contract to go to MTM for our ADA services, uh, functional testing services. I'm just sad I can't see Danny Coleman's face. It's just been too long, Danny. Yeah, but I can see yours, Karen, and it's a sight for sore eyes. You can't see mine. I'm not on the camera, I didn't think. Well, I saw it earlier. Okay, well, <laughs> the main difference is my hair's a lot longer because I can't get it cut. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you still look good. You're looking good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I've been asked to... I've been asked to read off the names that, that did vote yes. So I okay. have Danny, Danny Coleman as uh, making the initial motion. Uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't get who made that second. Nathan. Nathan. All right, Karen Ringe voted aye. Morris voted aye. Michael voted aye. And did our chair vote? Oh, I didn't write her name down. And Toulouse yes, I did. Also, 
Right. Talupe also voted aye, and our alternates do not vote. Right. Uh, I, I think we're good. I as well, David. Joshua Gill. Right, Michael. Got it. No, that's Joshua. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. That does it for the, the ADA functional testing. Uh, All right. So the next item on the agenda is a request for public hearing at the June 11th RTA meeting for service improvements for Route 20 Garner and Route 21 uh, uh, Care Raleigh scheduled for September 2020. And that's also you, David. Yes, yeah, thank you. And I'm trying to advance the slide. Mm -hmm. David, while you're doing your thing, is it even? Are we even going to be able to have a public meeting uh, on June the 11th? Do you think? Well, let me let me go through this uh, uh, information that we've got, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll move on from there. If that's okay. All right. All right. So uh, this agenda item is uh, a request for the Transit Authority to set a public hearing on June the 11th, 2020, at 4 p.m. for service improvements to our Route 20 Garner service and our Route 21 Carol Lee. And I'll briefly mm -hmm. uh, provide a little bit of information about uh, what our plans are. Uh, the 20 Garner service was actually already scheduled for a public hearing, and unfortunately it had to be postponed due to our current situation. Um, but the, the funding for the Route 20 service was provided in FY20, and essentially today it's providing hourly service, uh, so departures once an hour from downtown Raleigh into Garner, uh, where it does a small loop and then returns in, back into downtown. And the proposal is to increase our, our frequencies to every 30 minutes departure from downtown. Uh, the route path stays the same, no changes, other than when the second bus gets into Garner, it runs the small loop in the opposite direction. So we're providing bi-directional service on that small loop. Um, the Carolee service is in the recommended FY21 work plan. And similar to the Garner service, we're asking to increase frequencies to every 30 minutes, seven days a week, roughly from 6 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. And then it would remain at its current hourly service after 7 o'clock until 10 o'clock uh, when it goes out of service. Today, this route provides 30-minute uh, frequencies only in the peak periods in the, on Monday through Friday. So we would increase uh, to 30 minutes in the off-day or midday peak or midday time frame, roughly 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and then all day on the weekend. This is one of our most productive routes. It operates today at about 50 passengers per hour, uh, Monday through Friday, and on the weekends when it's only running hourly, it's averaging close to 60 passengers per hour. So it is in desperate need of some additional uh, service. Well, Dave, can I ask you a question? Uh, with 50 uh, of an hour, are we uh, practicing uh, social distancing? And uh, or are we running a shadow bus behind this bus to make sure that uh, we facilitate the uh, social distancing or how does that all work out? The, I'm the, glad you, you're at capacity, but I'm just curious with the uh, other aspects of uh, the new standards we're having to adhere to. Absolutely. The, our, today's ridership obviously is quite a bit lower uh, than the, the statistics I quoted. Uh, those stats are pre-COVID situation. Uh, it is still one of our heavier used routes, and Go Raleigh does have uh, tripper buses that they insert uh, as needed uh, on on all of our services uh, when they have the capacity to do so. So you're saying it's not doing 50 per hour now, it's doing less, or whatever that yeah, it, stat that you just, just gave us. Right. Our, our ridership uh, is you know, down quite a bit. I believe it's up at about 60% reduction from our normal level. The, the 50 mm -hmm. riders per hour uh, is our you know, pre-COVID situation. So do we actually need to increase this now or can we just, I don't know how to, 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 uh, to uh, analyze the situation as it is now, but you, the, you the, want to add something, add something to it. 
Right. The, the proposed service changes would not take uh, effect until September. So we're certainly hoping that by September we are much closer to normal than we are today. Um, did we discuss how we were going to go go through with public hearings if we're still kind of doing some social distance measures? Sure. So uh, this next slide that uh, I've got up uh, talks about engagement that we've already done uh, with the draft work plan. We did quite a bit in January and February when the, the draft plan was pushed out. Um, we do plan to have additional comment opportunities. Uh, throughout a public hearing comment period. Uh, I, I believe this may be our first uh, public hearing where we're opening up comments for an extended period of time rather than just have it, uh, those comments received at the public hearing. So our proposal is to open uh, com a comment period. Uh, we will have uh, placards on buses. We'll have social media. We'll be doing you know, digital messaging at our transit uh, center downtown. We'll be reaching out to the town of Garner. We've got multiple contacts along the Carol Lee route that we you know, worked with and, and actually did presentations at in you know, January that we'll be reaching out to and asking them to distribute uh, information for us so that we can receive comments uh, from May the 20th through June the 17th. All okay, of those comments. Uh, all of those comments would be brought to the board on the June 11th public hearing date, assuming we uh, set that today. And then the, the additional time after the 11th, uh, we would provide comments you know, soon thereafter when the uh, comment period closed. The reason we're holding that comment period open after the public hearing is literally within the last couple of weeks, we've had new legislation uh, that requires uh, authorities and boards to not vote during a public hearing, and we must receive comments for a minimum of 24 hours after the public hearing date. So like you, would not be able, you would not be able to vote on these service changes until the next uh, scheduled Transit Authority Board meeting, hopefully uh, in July. David, uh, this is Karen so Ringe. I have a question, which is, um, has the City Council established um, recommendations for how long public comment periods need to be open now for, for any of our departments? I'm just wondering if we're, or, or is this just what you all have decided? And I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just asking. I'm not aware of any uh, recommendations from, from council, but I'm certainly not the authority on that as, <laughs> as well. Uh, public hearing comment periods can always be open for extended periods of time. Uh, Campbell does that regularly uh, and the Go Triangle Board does as well. So this is the, the extension after the public hearing date was part of the legislation. And since we're in you know, different times where we actually can't go out into the community and hold meetings face to face, we, we felt it important to have an extended comment period so that we can have an opportunity to receive more comments. Yeah, and I agree with that, and I'm sure everybody else does too. We gotta, you know, let people have access, and you know, and extenuating times. Uh, this is Tulum Hey, how how are people commenting? Are we just doing this via email? Are they able to go to the um, to the website and comment there? How how are we collecting public comments? So the the process that we've identified so far is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have social media blasts that will have phone numbers that they can call and leave voicemails with their comments. Uh, we will have our uh, Go Raleigh at RaleighNC.gov email active to receive comments. We will be setting up a, a, a very brief survey that provides you know, just a little bit of information on the two service changes. We'll collect just a little bit of demographic data, male, female, uh, zip code that you live in, and then an opportunity for them to provide comments through a website. So those are the uh, identified opportunities at, at this point. Uh, can I ask a question now? You have to announce yourself. Only, only, until, only, only after you announce yourself. Okay. Uh, this is to Michael, and if, if Ms. Tucker is out there in the, uh, uh, listening in on all this stuff, do we need to make sure that all this, uh, these uh, things that could possibly uh, impact our budget 
which we I don't know if we're even going to have a report today on how how we're going to end out the year. But uh, I kind of think that um, before we move forward on either one of these items, I'd like to hear what the uh, Finance Committee has to say about, um, y you know, uh, you know, should we appreciate the fact that we have, um, you know, we can uh, scale back a little bit and then scale up when, when, when we need to. And uh, do we need to think about that to meet uh, the budget, you know, and the, the lack of, uh, you know, I can only imagine that we not, don't have as much revenue coming in, and council is looking for some places to trim. And uh, how do how do we factor that in by being, uh, you know, uh, uh, our fiduciary responsibility toward uh, the, the financing of the whole operation? Michael. Uh, hi, Daniel. This is Michael Stevenson. Uh, I think it's a good point. Um, the fact is, we haven't met as a committee in, well, I guess a couple months, and the last um, thing we saw in terms of the budget was a draft budget. So I don't know if there's been a, an updated draft. Um, it has, hasn't been circulated to my knowledge. And, and then I also don't know how that may fit in or not fit into the city's budget and what they're looking at. So I think you're raising a good point. Uh, I don't have any additional information to provide on it. I don't know if David, um, anybody on staff could comment on that. But, um, you know, we in the last two months, we've sort of been in a state of suspension and um, have not been receiving information along those lines. Okay, thank you. I, I can say that both of these projects are 100% funded through the waste transit plan and have been through a uh, fairly thorough vetting process for eligibility of, of funding. Uh, we will be talking about uh, Wake Transit and City of Raleigh budget. I believe it's two items down on the agenda. And then we'll have some additional conversation about the Wake Transit plan and uh, the differences between the draft and the recommended plan. Uh, there was a significant reduction in uh, amount in the original draft plan and what is being recommended due to the, exactly what Mr. Coleman and Mr. Stevenson are talking about. So well, I'm really concerned about coming out of 2021, uh, excuse me, coming out of 19 and 20. I'm not even thinking about 2021 so much as I'm thinking about 19 and 20. You know, is there enough money for us to, are we going to end up in the red or in the black in our current 1920 budget? This is Karen Wrench. Danny, I think we should, I want to hear from the staff about where things are with the money overall. And we're not voting okay. on anything right now because, I mean, obviously sales tax is way down and that's going to affect right. the big transit plan. So, but, but we don't yeah. know, we, we're waiting for, we, let's let the staff provide that information later in the meeting and then. So we want to decision. suspend, do, just, so do we just want to suspend this item here until later on or what? Well, I thought so we were voting on stuff. And, oh. Well, maybe we are voting now. <laughs> Would you like right, to we're motion to suspend this item to, to suspend voting on the item until after we speak with staff at the end of the meeting? So, so uh, if, if I may logical. jump in, if, if I, if I can jump for? in, we're, we're not setting, we're not voting today to approve these services. We're only requesting a public hearing date be set in June. And then you would not even vote on the service improvements to actually go into effect until the next meeting, which would be July or August. So, but so this, that, this is Tallulah Pay. Can we can we vote on whether or not? Well, I guess we could vote on it. My question would be, if we don't know where we are with COVID and with people coming together, um, are you saying that we would not have an in person? Um, public meeting that most of it would just be <clears throat> via public comment? Are you saying that because of COVID and we have an extra few days to collect pub public comment, you would still want to do it in person for those who want to show up? Who is that, to David or the floor? That's to, uh, to, to, to David. As far as we're voting on whether or not to have a, a public meeting on June 11th, how can we do that if we don't know what the state of things are going to be in June? 
So are you saying that you want to vote for us to still have a public hearing, like have public, a public open, you know, open meeting to the public meeting, excuse me. And just, and because we have the extra days to collect comments virtually, still have it in person for those who want to show up and just collect comments. Are we saying we're not having it on the 11th and we're just going to do it virtually? Like what's the backup since we can't come together? Mr. Walker, you're on mute. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So the legislation was, was passed considering the, the virtual environment that we are now holding uh, these types of meetings. Uh, so it, it's allowing us to provide additional times for folks to provide comments. Um, we may be able to, on the 11th, hold a virtual meeting where people are able to call in and actually provide comments live. Uh, we're not 100% certain that will be a, a capability, but we, we would hope that it would be. But if not, we're still, at a minimum, going to have a, a three-week uh, period where folks can provide comments for the board to consider uh, on these changes before making a recommendation. So there is no in-person public meeting you're being, that staff is proposing. Is that correct, David? That, that's correct. It would be a virtual, right. virtual meeting, assuming we're still in you know, similar conditions in June, uh, where we would have a meeting similar to what we're doing today. Uh, we will provide you with the comments that we've received to date on June 11th. And then we will also provide, you know, after that uh, additional week period, the additional comments that we've received. Well, I, this is Karen Rinch, and I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and plan on having a virtual public comment period with, along with the extended online and phone call option public comment period as staff has recommended. I don't see any reason why we would have an in-person public hearing. I mean, that's not what's happening right now with City Council or the Planning Commission. I think people are all going to want to be safe, so I, I, I endorse the staff recommendation. This is Michael Stevenson. I would second that. And I'll add a comment that I am currently engaged with two public entitlement processes in Chapel Hill, and we've been having a, quite a, a large number of meetings online with public engagement. It seems to be working quite well. Call for the vote uh, on uh, to Bay. Well, I have some, this is Nathan Spencer. I have, uh, some comments not based on uh, this meeting, but on the recommendations for service changes. Um, only that I think that uh, I am disappointed that uh, Glenwood uh, 6 is not included, only because the homes, uh, the habitat homes and the shelters along the route, I think, um, uh, are going to be needing to be served. I realize that the uh, Carolee route. Uh, serves um, Oak City and the Healing Center and a uh, number of places that are also needed, but I was hoping that uh, Glenwood 6 would also serve that. That's my only comment. That's fair. Madam Chair, if, if you don't mind, can you do a roll call uh, by members so we can record the vote? I don't think that we voted just yet. So has it been seconded? The motion was, yeah. who made Michael the second? Michael seconded it. Okay, so Michael. it's second. Okay, and then we have the conversation. Great. All right, so all in favor, please respond by raising your hand. My hand is up in the air. Oh, yeah, those who That's cannot Daniel. respond by letting it, like, voicing your, your vote. This is Karen right. Ringe. I vote aye. David, you got my vote, right? Madam Chair, if you don't mind, can you call each member by name and let them speak up? Yes, I will. Okay. One more way. All right. All right. Uh, Nathan Spencer? Aye. Karen? Karen Ridge? Aye. 
Michael Stevenson. Aye. Danny Coleman. Aye. Morris Cook. Aye. Joshua Gill. Aye. Tulupe Omokaye. My vote is aye as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. On to the okay. next item on the agenda. Uh, so that has been passed. The vote is passed to uh, for us to hold a virtual meeting on June 11th uh, for the Route 20 Garner and Route 21 uh, care release schedule for September 2020. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the HNTB System Standards and New Bern Avenue BRT Final Design, and that is with Mila. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, I will be providing here. an update on the status of the late BRT program and next steps necessary to, to the Denton project. Um, I can't hear. I can't, I can't either. Yeah. Mila, I can't hear you. Can you speak up or maybe adjust the yes, mic? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, that's better. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so, um, my name is Mila Vega. I'm uh, the prog uh, program manager for the Wake DRT program, and I will be providing an update on the status of the program and next steps necessary to keep advancing the project. Um, you can see uh, we have four BRT quarters in the Wake uh, BRT program, uh, northern, uh, nor uh, going from downtown Raleigh, north, south, east, and west. Uh, this slide shows the current status of the project. As you know, New Bern is at 30% design, and uh, in order for us to advance it from 30 to final design, as well as establish system standards, we need to execute another contract, and this is the main point of the discussion. The main uh, subject of the discussion today will be discussed in the contract and uh, recommended uh, consultant HNTB. Uh, southern and western quarters, they're moving uh, on parallel tracks. We are working through route selection, and at a later date, we will be coming back with uh, contract amendment to WSC existing contracts to uh, initiate 0 to 30 percent design and NEPA work on this quarter. And uh, northern quarter completed pre planning through major investment studies, and we will be initiating route selection um, this fall. Mila, is, is, can I ask a question? It's Karen Ringe. Uh Karen, do you mind if I get through the presentation? Uh, we have some oh, transitions no. with speakers, and then no, I, I will be happy to answer your question. That's totally fine. Sorry, I didn't see Thank the you. I appreciate slides. it. Thank um, you. We, um, we started a new burn project back in spring of 2019. You can see this graphic that shows the uh, timeline of the project and major milestones. Grayed out milestones have been completed. And uh, today we are talking about the HNTB contract to advance the design and to create system standards for the entire Wake DRT program that will be uh, then implemented on subsequent Uh, well, we went through a very uh, rigorous uh, selection process to uh, select HNTB as the um, top ranked consultant. We had multi-departmental and multi-jurisdictional selection committee. You can see representatives listed on the slide, included Campo, NCDOT, our partner municipalities, Town of Cary and Town of Garner, uh, Wake County, and uh, numerous departments within the city of Raleigh. We also had to go triangle. Uh, we went through several rounds. Uh, at first, we received uh, and uh, reviewed and scored independently all five submittals. Uh, we received submittals from ACOM, HNTD, HDR, Kimlehorn, and STD. Uh, selection committee scored. Selection committee members scored all the submittals independently. Then we had a meeting to review and discuss the scoring and to develop a shortlist. Three teams were selected for shortlist interviews: HDR. HNTB, Kim Le Horn, uh, and after the interviews, we did additional analysis on two teams, 
HNTD and Kimley Horn based on that work and um, recommendation from the uh, selection committee, uh, HNTD was recommended as a top ranked consultant. The scope includes two main elements. One is to take Newburn Avenue to final design. Uh, and you can see some of the highlights of categories listed on the slide. Uh, it includes survey work. Uh, it will include um, uh, utility coordination, uh, public engagement. Oh. Um, and uh, the second uh, part of the work uh, includes um, uh, Wake BRT system standards and uh, user experience. Uh, system standards, as I've mentioned, will be implemented on all the future BRT quarters, and it includes uh, elements like various policies, for example, use of bicycles on buses, as well as branding and public engagement. All right, so since it's up for, I'm on RTA and it's up for the vote now, and I want to stand, hold it down. Can everybody mute their, can you mute everybody's line on this end? I don't know if you all could do that first. Okay. Indra, can you switch the slide? Danny Thank Coleman, you. you need to mute your phone because we can hear background. Thank you. All right, did you hear everything? I just, no way. We heard you talking to somebody, so just mute your phone, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now I will have three slides that will uh, go through some of the core uh, elements of the proposed contract as well as approximate uh, fee uh, associated with each category. I just want to point out that we are still working through reviewing the fee and uh, we will be um, advancing to negotiations uh, with the consultant. So the numbers or the uh, split between the tasks could slightly change, but this will give you a good idea of the overall effort um, associated with this work. Uh, system standards uh, for HNTB at some consultants are estimated at approximately two million. And again, it will include elements like policies, fair policy, um, coordination um, policy for use of bicycles. And uh, one of the big elements will be brand and that will be um, rolled out on the entire uh, system. The second category is final design. HNTD portion of that is approximately three million, so it's final design for New Bern, and it includes um, FDA coordination. As you know, this project is going through the Federal Transit Administration Small Starts Program, so that FDA coordination is essential. Roadway design, uh, it will include signal work and post design support all the way through uh, anticipated revenue uh, servicing at the end of 2023. Uh, final design subconsultant. Uh, the fee for subconsultant work is approximately two and a half million. It will include a lot of technical work like survey, geotech. Uh, this section also includes the landscape and architecture, specific station architecture, um, as well as anything else we, need to, we might need to revisit uh, um, with environmental. As I've noted, uh, HNTB has been selected as the uh, primary consultant for this work, but they are not doing uh, the work by themselves. They have a very um, diverse and uh, experienced group of subconsultants. Most of the subconsultants, you can see them all listed on the slide, most of them are designated DBEs, and most of them are either within the triangle or within the state. Also, I want to highlight that uh, our FTA DBE goal is 13%. The current estimate that HNTB provided um, for DBE participation is approximately 30%. Uh, Thank you. I can't uh, hear anything. So. We will uh, go now into some introductions. Mark uh, Hoffer, he is the overall project manager. He will be overseeing the entire program. Uh, and uh, Mark, I will ask you to come to the podium and introduce yourself and the team. Great, thank you, Mila. Um, as Mila said, my name is Mark Hoffer. I am going to be the project manager of the entire program. 
Um, and I just want to start my comments by saying um, that on behalf of HNTB and our entire team that Mila just showed a second ago, uh, we're very pleased to have been selected to do this work. We're very excited about the project and, and the opportunity to work with you and, and the city and, and, in fact, all of Wake County to bring a, what we honestly believe will be a nationally acclaimed project um, to the Triangle area. Um, so my job today is to introduce the project management leadership team um, and introduce you to HNTB. HNTB is a large national engineering consulting firm. We deal almost exclusively in infrastructure projects. Uh, we have about 65 offices around the country with 5,000 employees. Uh, locally, we have about 90 employees here in Raleigh and another 30 or so in Charlotte. So we have a pretty strong uh, North Carolina presence um, and have been doing work actually in Raleigh for 35 years. Um, I am, I have been with um, HNTB for about five years and I serve as our firm's national BRT practice leader. In that role, I have the opportunity to work on BRT systems and, and visit BRT systems around the country. I've had some role in a BRT project on probably at least eight projects and uh, can't tell you how many other places I have visited and, and toured their systems. Um, and I currently serve as the chair of the American Public Transit Association BRT Standards Committee. Um, but more importantly, and, and what uh, I have promised David and, and Mila, is my background prior to joining HNTB. I've spent about 35 years in the public sector working at six different public transit agencies in five different states. Uh, most recently, I was the CEO of the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority um, in Kansas City, where we opened two BRT projects during my tenure. Uh, the first was in 2005, and while it, by all standards, it would be, by all of today's standards, it would probably be considered a BRT light. At the time, it was a very innovative and progressive uh, program, very well received by FTA even to this day. Um, and it's amazing how many of the articles or how many of the um, uh, components of that project back in 2005 are pretty much standard in BRT projects today. So uh, what I will do is bring a practitioner's approach to this. I understand that uh, this is not just a design contract. This is something that David and, and, and David have to operate uh, when it's open. And uh, we will look at all aspects of it from an operational perspective as well as the customer's perspective. And I think that's a, that's a, a unique element that I can bring having served in that kind of capacity for so many years. Um, what I'd like to do right now is run you through the project management leadership team and give you a, a virtual introduction of who will be working on your project. John Hornbeck will be leading the final design. John is a lives in Raleigh. He moved here about a year ago. Um, John is a very experienced um, roadway engineer and project manager. He will be uh, serving as the deputy program manager, deputy project manager for this project in addition to leading the final design. Uh, John has been the design, uh, the engineer of record for multiple complex roadway projects. Uh, one of the more relevant projects that he was on recently was a project in Orlando to build a BRT system that included uh, median stations in a very, a very tight and congested arterial. And his client was actually Disney Corporation as opposed to a, a city. Um, and he said, whatever Disney wants, Disney gets. So uh, it was a very demanding client. Uh, you can imagine what had to happen in terms of maintenance of traffic while they were constructing uh, multiple lanes. Um, project was considered a very big success, completed on time, and actually was just recently uh, voted on in, by HNTB as the project of the year last year throughout the entire firm. Um, and uh, roadway projects don't get a lot of, of love on times for projects of the year. So um, we're very pleased to have John uh, available and doing this with us and glad that, that he had relocated to Raleigh. As soon as he came up, um, I knew that he was the right person for this project lead the final design. Brian Blackwell will be assisting him. Brian is a experienced engineer. He has about almost 10 years experience. He has a lot of design experience on complex um, road projects, uh, mostly in the city of Charlotte, as well as the uh, Charlotte International Airport and with US DOT. 
Uh, Brian will be leading the roadway project engineering uh, as well as design review, helping cost estimates. We will be working with John throughout the project. On the system standard side, um, we are very pleased to introduce Cherie Gibson. Uh, she, Cherie will be doing the public engaging, I'm sorry, public engagement and branding work effort. Um, and Cherie is going to introduce herself and her team in a minute, so I, I won't say much about that. Uh, the one thing I will say is uh, Cherie is a Raleigh native, went to high school in Raleigh, and she tells me there's nobody more excited for us to have won this project than her mother. So um, we're very excited to have her on it and, and uh, well, support her and interest in herself as well. And then finally, um, Mona Alabadi will be working with us. Mona is with SRF Consulting in Minneapolis. Uh, Mona has a very solid BRT background. She has worked on multiple projects throughout Minneapolis, Rochester, Minnesota, Indianapolis. Uh, she is the task lead. Sarah Prado. For, she's the task lead for the environmental for Chapel has Hill North the South. She's the, the environmental lead for Chapel Hill North South uh, line, BRT line, so she'll be coming here a lot. Uh, she will be leading the transit, uh, the uh, design standards program, as well as the FTA coordination. She's a, a very well known with FTA, including the region that serves Raleigh. Um, and I'm look, very much looking forward to her. We have a long established relationship with SRF uh, and find them to be one of our most trusted subconsultants. So we're pleased to have them on board as well. Um, and with that, I'm going to ask Cherie to introduce herself and um, introduce her team and a little bit about their approach to public engagement and branding. We'll turn it back over to David, and then we can answer questions. So Cherie. Thanks, Mark. Um, good afternoon. Uh, as Mark said, I'm Cherie Gibson, and I will be leading the public engagement task um, and the local team that will work with the city uh, to brand the new BRT system and manage a comprehensive public outreach uh, program. Um, as Mark alluded to, I grew up in Raleigh. I graduated from Millbrook High School uh, several years ago, and I uh, started my career um, in transportation as a public information officer with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Um, and since then, I've had the privilege to um, be able to work on a number of transit and infrastructure projects uh, for mostly public in most mostly public sector. Um, so in the Mid Atlantic region, and, and my focus has been to um, provide impactful programs designed to educate and involve um, all communities. Most recently, I led a team in Atlanta to brand the region's new initiative to unify all of their transit brands under one um, ATL umbrella. And in Washington, D.C., I led the marketing team that branded the new D.C. streetcar on 8th Street, um, which was instrumental in creating a great buzz before construction started. So I'm excited, to have, with, I'm excited for the opportunity to work um, in my hometown um, and as Mark said, my parents are very excited um, and they're friends in the Newburn Corridor. Um, so for branding, uh, we'll be uh, supported by Valerie Fields. Uh, she's the owner of PR Pros, which is a local PR firm. She's been working in the uh, uh, Triangle area for over 20 years. Um, and she brings tremendous uh, relationships with the arts community. Uh, she will be assisting with establishing the system-wide visual identity. Um, and what we want the branding to do is differentiate the service from other transit service. Uh, we want it to instill pride and excitement, and we want to generate that buzz um, to get people interested in learning more about the project. The branding plan will be implemented in three phases. It'll be um, anchored in research um, and driven by collaboration. Uh, so we will have constant input from our key stakeholders and project partners on the, on the project. Um, and once the identity is established, Valerie and her team will energize the brand through marketing, PR, and storytelling. We know this is the right way to drive the vision, um, and we're really excited about it. Um, so we know that effective branding can set the table for meaningful engagement, so we'll devise a community engagement plan to coincide and complement the effort. Simone Robinson, with Public Participation Partners, 
uh, will lead that effort. Um, P3, as we call them, is another local uh, DBE firm in the Raleigh area. Um, and Simone is very active in the community and is working with the city on several projects. And she's um, now uh, working in the Newburn, uh, Newburn Corridor uh, and she's currently working with the city on its community engagement process development strategy. Um, and she and her team have finished the first phase and they have had tremendous success um, in reaching uh, all, all um, people in Raleigh and their, um, their um, efforts are being very uh, well uh, created. They've decided, they reflect, uh, let's, ooh, their engagement right responses are extremely impressive and reflect Raleigh's true demographics. Uh, so we're really excited to have uh, Simone on the team. They have some uh, great innovative tactics um, that we're excited to bring to the project. So the community engagement will be comprehensive. It will be anchored in collaboration um, with partnership with businesses, with major employment centers uh, like Wake Med, um, and working with the Housing and Neighborhoods Department to make sure that we um, have coverage in all of the historic neighborhoods along the corridor. And most of all, we want to be inclusive and we want to meet people where they are. That's our overall approach for, for branding and engagement. Um, and you've heard a little bit about what um, our team is looking to do for this project. We're excited to partner with the city to bring more mobility choices to Raleigh and beyond. So we thank you, Madam Chair and the committee for um, the time on your agenda. And with that, I'd pass it on to David for the recommended action. Hello, Mila, I think that are you, we can't hear you on the city council if, if you all are talking. I mean, the council chamber. Thank right, you. I think uh, Andrew I think gave me second right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be, uh, I, I will be happy to answer any of your questions. This concludes our presentation. And while, uh, after I answer the questions, um, we will move to the recommended action um, and uh, take the vote. Uh, so are there any questions about the presentation, the team, or uh, overall approach? Hey, Mila, this is Michael Stevenson. Uh, thank you for that. Um, could, you, could you refresh my memory? What is the construction value for the Newburn Corridor uh, BRT? Uh, the total project is estimated at 72.5 million, but that includes everything, engineering, construction, vehicles, everything else. Thanks. This is Nathan Spencer. Um, I didn't have a question. I had a comment more that um, I appreciate that uh, the subs are local, that there's so many of them that are minority owned. I think that's a key factor for us. Um, as a city and to, as a region that grows. I also think that um, uh, in the engagement plan that uh, Sherry spoke about, I, I, it looked very good. I wanted to also suggest that maybe we, um, that they use the RTA as a resource as the members have been appointed by the city council to be representative of riders and the communities. Uh, folks like Chris Jones, who has a church right off of Martin Luther King Boulevard or Tal Lupe, who has uh, a voice within a lot of the community leaders with along the Newburn area, being able to um, uh, connect with them and the marketing committee to, uh, to help uh, engage and get feedback about what people want within their community. Yeah, I just to piggyback off of what Nathan said, thank you for those comments, Nathan. I don't have a question. I did have a chance to go to a um, community engagement uh, workshop that Simone did. I think I mentioned that to the group. She was actually one of the people that facilitated it. Um, I am 
hopeful. I know that I've been uh, very critical about the BRT. I am hopeful that our community engagement and us being ha having an opportunity to hear what everybody has to say and maybe doing a better job at getting more people that are in the community in the room. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that rolls out. I'm also looking forward to seeing how uh, with the digital divide that we have, that we're making sure that we're making sure that people that live along the New Bern Avenue corridor stay engaged. It's Michael Stevenson again. Um, and I'm sort of reading into this, but it seems like uh, that part of the um, RFP criteria and selection criteria put a lot of emphasis on the public engagement scope. So I would like to acknowledge the staff for doing that and making it an integral part of the selection criteria. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had to get off the call for a second. The school principal came by to deliver caps and gowns. So I had to get off the call. Um, uh, first of all, I want to say um, I um, had a chance when I was working with Wake Up to get to know Mark Huffer a little bit. And I'm, um, I'm really excited that he's going to be leading this because I, I know he's really committed. And it sounds like... Um, that they've put together a really good public engagement team. Um, as and I don't, you all, uh, to Lilipay, you may have already said this, but obviously I've been harping for a long time along with you about how important it is that we have local people leading public engagement. And so HNTV, HNTV obviously responded to that with local contractors, and I think that's going to help a lot, particularly, I mean, People, we need people who understand our community and understand concerns. And so I applaud you all for doing that. And I applaud the city staff for choosing a contractor that recognizes how important it is because um, we, we want this to be successful and we want people to be heard and feel like they can really own this new BRT system. So thank you all. And, um, and my, last, my only question uh, about all this, is given uh, that everybody's social distancing and working from home, has Mila, has this process continued on schedule or have things been held up because of the constraints we've all had? Right now, the overall schedule uh, remains pretty much the same. Um, we are working in the background on transfer and 30% design information to the final design. Uh, the biggest um, obstacle, obviously, is social distancing and public engagement has been such a critical component of this work. Uh, we are thinking about various strategies that will allow us to keep moving forward with the project, making progress while ensuring uh, that all voices are heard. So right now there are no updates on the schedule, but I will keep this word informed if any Um, oh, well, okay. Well, thank you. And um, is um, Sherry Gibson still there and available? Sherry, are you still on the phone? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Oh, well, um, uh, I did, I did want to mention that, um, and I'm Karen Ringe. I'm also chair of the marketing committee. Yes. And um, we would certainly welcome uh, reports on occasion from your team, whether it's you know, one person is the liaison, or uh, it doesn't really matter, but we would certainly um, love to have that as we move forward when we have marketing committee meeting, if that's Absolutely. possible. Yes, that is definitely possible, and we would fully expect to involve um, the committee, the marketing committee, as well as the full board um, in our engagement efforts. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? If not, we can, uh, if NJ can bring up the recommendation slide. I'm sorry, you were breaking up again. I'm sorry. Thank, thank you, uh, Mark and Mila. Um, great presentation. Um, uh, at this time, uh, we would like uh, for uh, the board to recommend approval of the HND, HNTB contract. Um, what this means from a practical standpoint is that uh, this would 
um, allow us to go ahead and present uh, this to the Raleigh City Council at an upcoming meeting. Um, I would say as early as June 2nd, but I can't say it would be June 2nd. Um, but uh, that would be the plan um, as we move forward. Uh, again, if you have any further questions, we still have the team available um, here in the council chambers, uh, but socially distant, uh, as well as uh, virtually. Um, so again, we're still here for any questions, uh, but we would uh, certainly appreciate your approval. This is Nathan Spencer, and I move to make a motion. I have a question. I, I have a question, Nathan. HNTV. We have Nathan. a question before we can make a motion. I would like if we are going to, this is to Lupe, if we are going to move with them, I would like to have an opportunity to speak with uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Sherry and Ms. Sherry Gibson and her team and kind of voice some of the concerns that I know that I've had and some of the community has had so that we can make sure that if this is the company we're moving forward with, that we're on the same page as far as, I'm sure we're on the same page as our passion and advancing the community, but making sure they were on the same page across the board. I, I get certainly my question think in. that that would be be possible for sure. Can uh, uh, you had a question? Yes. Has the finance committee uh, uh, reviewed this? This is Michael Stevenson. No, we have not received any information about this prior to the meeting. Right. Well, prior to the well, agenda. That was I, I just have it in my mind that uh, you know, if we have a financial committee, this is a seventy-five million dollar obligation that we're discussing. You know, should we not at least discuss it in committee and then make a recommendation back to the board? Daniel, I'm just this saying, you know, this the fee we're talking about is more like seven million, of my recollection. We're right, just approving right. the That's consultant okay. fee. Right. That is correct. Right. And, and again, my understanding is that this is Wake Transit funds, not City of Raleigh funds. That doesn't say mean, of course, Danny, that. Uh, we don't have a fiscal responsibility as a project sponsor, but uh, it is not city of Raleigh funds. This is uh, uh, sales tax uh, revenue from the year before from Wake Transit. I know that in our budget last finance meeting, we talked about the money for this project and we did approve the budget item. If I'm not mistaken, Michael, did, did, we, uh, did we not discuss it? Yes, the, you know, was part of, was, the, projected, the, the projected design and construction were in the Yeah, so that's all I'm saying, budget. you know. I just think that I'd like to at least say that we had, we talked about it in our committee, uh, you know, before we and make a recommendation back to the board. If that's not a procedurally correct uh, position to take, then I stand down. But if, if it is a procedurally correct position to take, then I, I wish to have it entertained. Um, Again, uh, if I could, uh, real quick, we uh, certainly understand um, that we're in uh, unprecedented times and uh, we're not able to uh, get before you as often uh, as that we would like to. Um, as you can tell from today, uh, sometimes these virtual environments can be a little more challenging than, than we anticipate. Uh, I think that uh, we'll get better at this over time, um, uh, but I'm not sure uh, at a subcommittee level um, when we would be able to have uh, have that moving forward. Uh, council committees have not met yet. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to put that out there as just information. Again, we can provide more detailed information uh, at any point uh, through this process. Um, if we would like a conference call or some special meeting, um, uh, staff will be happy to put together uh, another virtual meeting and we can advertise that as a special meeting. Uh, if you would like some type of question and answer session, either with uh, staff or with the members of uh, of, of this um, uh, group, HNTB, uh, the overall team. That is. So uh, again, I think we've got options to move forward, but I just did want to put that out there that, that we are certainly still in some kind of, uh, or we're in a realm of uncertainty. And well, you know, if I wasn't, if I had not worked with Kimberly Horn over the years, for so many years, I'd thing would probably blown right over my head. But, um, you know, we had two contestants. We have only seen one side of the equation. Uh, we haven't seen what Horn had out there. 
And nor when we have a committee that, uh, for something like this, I think it should function. Now, I know that my vote will probably get washed out. I don't have a problem with that. I just want the record to reflect. I think we should have a procedural thing here that the finance committee should look at it, give its recommendation back to the board, and then the board uh, take that recommendation. Uh, just like we t um, talked about earlier, you know, uh, what is the financial impact, you know, what uh, and so forth and so on. So anyway, I've made my point. There's a motion on the floor that's ready to step in right after I'm finished talking. And I'm, I'm fine with that too. I have a question based on off of Danny's question. I mean, I mean, either way for me, but if, if, if that is the, the pr procedure that we normally go by, are we foregoing that uh, because of the times that we're in? And if not, and if we do, those are the, our procedures, is there a way for us to have a quick special meeting, have a quick, you know, special board vote to, to make sure that we're checking our boxes? Yeah, because what are we going to do when we come up with the read the thing for TransDev? Are we going to just um, let's you know how how is that going to work out? We have other things coming in front of us that if we don't establish and adhere to our own principles and policies, we will uh, find ourselves unable to uh, to do things we have to do in the future because we've uh, abdicated our responsibilities here on a very large well, product. Uh Okay, this is Karen Ringe. Um, I um, don't disagree with Danny that you know this is a major this is a major budget. I mean, it's much larger than RTA's budget, and we are the team. We we are the project sponsor. At the same time, I also recognize that for the last two months we haven't had any committee meetings because everyone's been tr social distancing, and we've been trying to figure out how to handle that. And so, I, and I also understand that somewhat there's some time of the of the essence with this because. Um, work needs to keep going. Um, now, since the city council's meeting is on June 2nd, could there be a virtual finance committee meeting before then just to answer more questions, or could we just talk about it right now? I mean, like, I, I don't necessarily distrust all the committee that reviewed and thoroughly, I'm assuming, five different proposals, and we weren't part of that, and that's fine. Um, that's not our job, um, but I, I am curious, you know, if if someone who was on the team, on the committee, could perhaps speak about why you chose HNTB from a fiscal perspective over all of the other four proposals. Could could we talk about even that right now? I mean, was there were all the budget were all the budgets proposed or um, the proposals? that were presented to the committee, were they similar in cost? Uh, was HNTB yes. the cheapest? Um, yeah. This is so my to be the I'd, like, I'd like to unpack this a bit and uh, and ask maybe some clarifying questions. These are uh, quals based selections. Uh, so, you know, they, they go through the qualifications and the team experience and they make the recommendation based on that. The final fee is a negotiated amount. Uh, David, correct me if I'm wrong here, but these are the procurement uh, rules I'm familiar with. And that uh, is correct. Uh, everything yeah. is based on a proposal. Uh, yeah. So it is qualifications and proposals based selection. Uh, right. It was a two step process evaluation yeah. of proposals, uh, then evaluation with finalists and interviews. I just want um, to clarify that this that the selection is not based on a low fee type of situation. So, I, I mean, that's that I'm going to get that off the table. Um, the second thing is, um, if I understand it, when you make your award, you'll still be proceeding in a phase by phase fashion. Uh, so, let's say six months from now, um, we find ourselves in a situation everything is going down the tubes. I don't think it's going to be the case. But do we not have opportunities going forward to make course corrections or adjustments? as economic conditions would uh, dictate? In our contract. Yes, in contracts, we have several different, um, for lack of a better term, escape mechanisms or correction mechanisms filled into those. Uh, and so we can certainly, at a later date, get into uh, exactly what they are. Um, uh, certainly, there's uh, you know, termination types of clauses for certain activities, things of that nature. Uh, I don't have all of that in front of me today, but something that we can certainly bring back 
uh, for one clarification, well, while we said that the um, proposals are certainly uh, qualifications based, that's true along with the interviews, um, as a rate or fee is developed, that's done very closely with our engineering services department. Um, they deal with a number of awards engineering firms uh, throughout the year, uh, very large roadway projects uh, that they deal with, um, as well as utilities and other projects that also uh, may fall under their purview. Uh, so they're very um, familiar with uh, the pricing that is associated with these services, along with the public participation in many forms as well. So um, uh, that has, or what we presented today, has met all of those check boxes as far as our internal reviews within the city of Raleigh, and not just within transit, but gen truly within the city at large. Hey, can I make a, a, a substitute uh, motion to, to um, Nathan? I move that the the contract that it, we are approving gets uh, gets over to Michael from the finance committee, and let Michael make a review. And make a, and you allow the and uh and then uh, go through the perfunction of that we did review the contract, and then let Michael uh, make a recommendation to the finance committee. And the finance committee can either uh, make a rec you know you the board will abide by the finance committee's recommendation, or we go back to and have a call meeting, two call meetings. We have a call meeting of the finance committee, and then we have a call meeting of the board, so we can not impede this from happening on June June, June the second. Uh, but at the same time, we set the precedent so if there's something that comes down the pike later on that we want to take task, staff to task on or anything that we may want to take somebody to task on, we can lean on our own process and not have someone say, well, you know, you didn't follow any process in this particular case right here. I think in you it's our benefit to have some sort of defined process that we uh, abide by. Daniel, I, I need to... Um... I need to say here, we're not approving a contract. There is no contract. We are approving the selection, the recommendation of h &TB as the selected consultant. After the city council uh, approves it, they will then enter into final contract negotiations. But right now, oh, I'm, sorry. I thought, I thought I'm wrong. There, was there, is, no, there is no contract. There's a, there's a selection, a recommendation that we would be supporting to go forward to city council. Nathan Spencer, I wanted to also sorry. add that this is a fully funded project. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, this is to Lou Pay. David, I thought that you did say that there was a contract. I did too. You did? I thought that's what so, you just said. So my apologies. No, there is not a contract at this time. Uh, this is a award to, of these services to HNTB. Uh, we have, as you could, if you remember the presentation, uh, the amounts that we had up there had approximate, so those aren't set completely. Uh, we feel very confident that they're very close, uh, but they're not 100% uh, there. That would happen upon final uh, execution of the contract. I also get what Danny is saying. He's not necessarily a, saying that he's against this or that there's an issue or anything like that. He's more so saying that if this is the path that we followed in the past, just making sure that we check those boxes off, not saying that we're not going to approve, the, you know, make our approval of this proposal uh, for this company to go forward, but just saying that we don't want something because we have had issue with contractors in the past, right? This has been kind of a situation with the operators and things with the RTA. And I think he's referring to more so not wanting to set a precedent that going forward, we didn't do this. And then that kind of sticks us when we are trying to say, hey, we want to see what's going on here and there. So I don't think this is a, a for or against. It's just making sure that we've done. And I know that with, with what's going on, it's been hard for us to meet. So we haven't normally, we would have had, you know, this wouldn't be the first time we've seen this proposal or somebody has seen it. But with what's going on, it's understandable. Is there any way, and I don't mean to hold off the process, but is there any way that since city council isn't meeting till June 2nd, somehow next week we can like get this over so that we can go ahead and have Michael look at it in the finance committee, do a quick virtual meeting. We do a, uh, we do a special meeting for the authority and then move forward. Is that possible before the second? Um, the, so tomorrow's the, obviously the 15th. Um, that, that would be challenging in, in today's environment. Um, I can't say that we couldn't, 
but I, I know that that would be challenging. It took us uh, uh, obviously about 30 to 45 days to get us to where we are today uh, to get things uh, back moving again. So, um, uh, can, again, can I add a comment, uh, David? Yes, sir. Please. So, um, I'm just trying to make this as clear as I can. All of the uncertainties and contractual situations that may or not may or may not arise would arise with any of the consultants that would be selected. And we, we cannot predict the future. Um, we're simply saying that this, that we endorse the committee's recommendation that this is the most qualified of those five firms. I personally have a lot of faith in them and their process. Um, I don't know what I could look at or anybody else in this committee that might change that recommendation unless we dug really deep into all of the all of the uh, quals that were presented, and I, I, I can assure you those were hundreds of pages of documentation. I really don't feel the need, uh, and I don't have the time to do that. So I, I just oh. want to reiterate, we are, we are simply uh, endorsing the recommendation of the firm selection that will go forward to the City Council. I understand. I don't think that this is about this particular case. Again, if the board decides to move forward and make a recommendation, I'm fine with that. I do think that it's understanding the situation that we're in. It's kind of difficult for somebody to tell us to vote on something when we haven't seen everything. I think that's the point that Danny's making. But uh, well, let me, you let, me say, move, let, let me let, uh, let me defend for myself. I understand that we made a selection not based on money at all. It's all about capabilities, qualifications. And if that's the way we move forward, and that's a new trend that we have established here, not, I don't want to be the one that rocks the boat. You know, that's I a legal want to make sure that I understand, I understand that the money, the, the amount of the, the uh, you know, the fee or whatever it is, was not a determinant factor in selecting the firm. It was a, a combination of fee and qualifications or just a, or just a consummation of qualifications irrespective of fees. Is that, is that what you're saying, David? Yeah, so I'm, yeah, the, the legal requirement for engineering services uh, is that it has to be qualifications based. Uh, once you choose the most qualified firm, uh, you begin negotiations with that firm. If for some reason you cannot come to a negotiation with that firm, uh, you default to your second firm uh, that was ranked. So uh, okay. it is uh, based on qualifications in rank order and ability to negotiate. And I, this is Nathan Spencer. I've, I've never had in our past, uh, have we gone through the, um, the different uh, companies that have come up and made comments based on the staff recommendations in part because Previously, as I had learned it when I first arrived, was that uh, we, the transit authority, got in some trouble some years ago over meddling with uh, who was the one who got awarded or um, who did not. So we've left it up to the staff to make the recommendation. In this case, um, it's a project that's fully funded uh, outside the city of Raleigh and outside our budget. Um, that we are endorsing staff's decision on who to award this to. And then I think once we get into the negotiations and the scope, we have a whole lot more influence in terms of engagement and, and those pieces that I think make a lot of sense for us to, to both be meeting on, but also having a voice on. I'm not Could sure I if... Nathan's motion has been seconded, but I want to second his motion as originally made. All right, is there any question? I will add one more question slash comment uh, to David. Um, it's Michael Stevenson speaking. Um, so going forward, and I'm, I'm trying to come back to some of Danny's concerns, would you bring the uh, as the contractual negotiations proceed, uh, would you bring uh, those back to the finance committee so we'd have a chance to give a high level overview 
of of the content of that and if we had any concerns or any anything else or any comments we'd have an opportunity to have a look at that yeah not that Danny, does that would that address some of your concerns? You know, yes. I appreciate your your your, recommend, your uh, comment and uh, what you just asked for. I just want to make sure that we're all mindful because this is all in the minutes. There's some other things that are coming up in front of us, and we have established some very liberal uh, ways of oversight of staff, and uh, and I don't I think that. Uh, because sometimes we give staff a little bit a run for the money. Sometimes, you know, and it, it, creative tensioning makes a better product. So, I, uh, I you know, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I, I understand where we're headed. I mean, I just want to make sure we remember this when we get to the next bridge that we have to cross, and we don't have uh, all the planks on the bridge to step on, so we can cross that bridge. Yeah, that's all. I agree with Danny's point because, I mean, we were in the middle of working on bylaws and we do have to be intentional about the things that we do as a transit authority, even in, especially in times like this, because this is where things can get very loosey-goosey and slip through the cracks. This is when that type of thing happens, right? When people can't come together and we can't, there can't be as much oversight when people are stressed and high tension and it's very easy to overlook things. And I think that I appreciate the fact that Danny is trying to make sure that we don't do that. So it's not just a holding up of things. This is not a trying to be difficult. This is very much a making sure that we follow policies and procedures because we don't want to, you know, make a mistake, especially with something as important as, as this project, as everybody knows how important this project is. Okay, I'm ready to vote. All right, so it's been moved and properly seconded that we approve, uh, uh, I'm sorry. That we improve HNTB as the contractor for the uh, system standards and BRT New Bern Avenue final design to uh, send to council for our approval. All in favor, uh, please raise your hand. Can I also add that we keep Michael's recommendation that uh, it come back to uh, the committee of the contract that we get a chance to review those pieces as part of this motion. So okay, make so, it even clear. All right, so that's all a part of the motion. You're hey, saying. Did, did you mean come back to finance committee? When you said yes, finance committee, and then the whole board later. The 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 uh, your recommendation of looking at that contract later when it comes through. Okay, so we want to move that we move forward with approving HNTB as the contractor for the New Bern Avenue final stage corridor. Uh, with the caveat that once approved by council that the contract comes back to the finance committee and the Raleigh Transit Authority or by then go Raleigh Transit Authority for our final approval and review of contract and scope of work to make sure that it's in when bounds with what we've been discussing. I would appreciate that. All right. Uh, that is the motion. Any question before we have the vote? And if we could get a roll call, that would be very helpful. I'll do that. Thank you. All right. Nathan Spencer, how do you vote? Aye. All right, Karen? Aye. Michael? Sorry, sorry, aye. Danny? Aye. Morris? Aye. Joshua? Aye. To Lula Pay, I vote aye as well. The ayes have it, the motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Myself. All right, moving on to the next item of the agenda that is the annual Go Raleigh and Go Access budget. And that is with Siobhan Tucker. And uh, Ms. Siobhan is on her way down. Uh, she is going to review um, uh, the FY21 budget as well as talk a little bit about the Wake Transit, uh, and then Mr. Walker will follow her uh, with some more information on the Wake Transit. So, Siobhan? Hello, everyone. Can everyone Hi. hear me okay? Mm -hmm. 
Um, for those of you I have not met yet, my name is Siobhan Tucker. I'm the Senior Fiscal Analyst for the Transit Division um, within the Transportation Department. Um, so for today, I will be walking you through a couple of slides related to both the City of Raleigh and the Wake, Tran Wake Transit Plan um, budget. Um, the slides will talk you through a high-level summary of the budget development process for both. Um, however, for program detail, I will ask you to refer to the two um, budget pages in your PDF packet. And what page is that uh, in that packet? I, uh, I think it's around page 15, somewhere between page 15 okay. and page 20. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. What page? Page 14. It's 15. 15 well, 14 is a route thing. 15 gives into budget. Okay. So the, the uh, updated budget before. summary. So the updated budget summary in your packet is very similar to the version that you received back in March. There have been mm -hmm. a few changes, and I'll walk you through those. Um, and those are primarily related to revenue assumptions. Um, based on COVID-19 impacts and also the weight transit plan. So will you, when you step us through it, will you show us the variations? If they don't appear, jump out at us. I will. Well, I see the big minus signs over here. <laughs> so we are still in the budget process for both the City of Raleigh and the weight transit plan. Um, on mm -hmm. your screen now, you will see upcoming dates for the city's process. On next Tuesday, mm -hmm. May 19th, the city manager will present the proposed FY21 budget to city council, uh, after mm -hmm. which there will be a series of meetings and work sessions in June to finalize the budget with uh, the goal of a budget adoption before June 30th. Okay. Is this where we have to comment? Hello. I'm sorry. What was the question? I said, is this where we need to, where we're going to comment? Expenditures in the new budget will be 10.67 percent lower than they were in the adopted budget for 20, 19, 20, 19 and 20. Oh, I'm sorry. I could. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in just a moment. Oh. Okay. Um, I just want to walk you through a couple of points related to the city budget. All right. Um, so as you know, COVID-19 has introduced much uncertainty, which presents a challenge when preparing a budget in general. And just trying Robert to predict Owens. what resources will be available to fund meeting. operations and projects. Within the city, um, we have been working very diligently to be both fiscally conservative and responsible for the rest of this fiscal year. There are several cross-departmental working groups uh, that we're working with very closely, including with our finance and budget department, um, just to help manage this uncertainty related to the budget. Um, however, you know, as you know, it's still difficult to predict what will happen in the next few months, um, not to mention the next few years. So it's important that the city and transit stay flexible and be prepared to pivot and make changes as needed. Um, for the FY21 budget, I will ask you to um, I will direct you to the PDF, the two PDF pages in the agenda packet. Um, the primary changes that you'll see here are, um, one, we did revise revenue assumptions for both fixed route fare box and advertising. Uh, we decreased fare box revenue by almost 40% um, and advertising revenue by about 20% based on the environment that we currently have. Um, also note, I also just wanted to note that fortunately for FY21, the city's general fund contribution to transit, um, even after um, the COVID outbreak, as well as our federal funding allocations are both um, consistent with prior year levels. Um, for the remainder of FY20, uh, because we are still working through this fiscal year, um, and also going into FY21, we will be closely monitoring our financial activity both revenues and expenditures. Um, for FY20, uh, we are currently in our year-end process, um, and it's a time where we focus on vendor payments, vendor receipts, um, also our federal and state reimbursement, as in getting cash in the door, 
um, improving our cash flow is very important right now, and also closing out completed projects and POs to open up um, open up budget. Um, and this activity will continue into F521 so that we can manage our resources as effectively as possible. I know that was a concern that was brought up earlier. Um, before I, I move on question? to the weight transit budget, are there any questions? Yes. Uh, on the North Carolina State D NC DOT, you think they're going to give you an extra million dollars this uh, 21? Uh, we're hopeful that we will. I, I mean, is that logical? I'm, I'm just saying, what, 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 what was that number in the one that you gave us back in March? What was that figure there then? It, it was the same number. So we and, were... and, yes, we, and yes, we do expect to get that funding from the state. Okay. Uh, just, just this is Nathan Spencer. Um, are we expecting? Uh, are we assuming any CARES Act money in this FY21 budget? Uh, yes, and David Eatman's going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yes, that's something we're, that we that we are looking at how to um, best use the CARES Act funding for FY20 and um, FY21 and beyond. Thank you. Are there any other questions about the uh, this city is, budget? This is, this is Karen Renge. I have a question. Um, I was in reading the minutes from our last meeting in March. Um, I actually wasn't at the meeting, but I noticed in the minutes that um, the, the board approved an additional staff person under marketing. And um, I wanted to, and I, my my question is, is that in the city's budget proposal? This is not Wake Transit plan money, right? This is the city's budget proposal under Wake Transit plan administration. Is that right? Um, so right now the city has implemented a hiring freeze. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and also just due to the current environment, the FY21 budget has been very conservative um, as far as adding positions. So as of now, we have not been approved to add any new positions for FY21. Well, I just did notice that, um, and I understand that, but I did notice in this budget, and I'm, again, I'm looking at um, the budget uh, that, uh, that says under revenue administration, our request is a 63% increase from FY20. I'm sorry, Karen, what bound was that again? Uh, under Wake Transit Plan Program, revenues under administration from FY20 to FY21, it's a 63% increase of what was adopted last year and what's being requested for this year. So um, these, in these include two positions that were approved through the Wake Transit Plan during FY20. Um, this is a transportation um, analyst position and also the procurement analyst position. Okay. So that's why now, you see that increase. Okay. So uh, just so I'm clear, so those positions have been approved, but if there's a hiring freeze, will they move forward? So those positions those? were approved. So, so those, position were, those positions were approved through the weight transit plan. However, due to the hiring freeze through the city's process, we are having to request um, approval through the budget through the budget department and human resources to actually fill those positions. So they may so or may just not because be they're, Right. So just because they were funded through Wake Transit, we still have to follow the city's internal process to actually okay. fill those positions. And that's another question of just lost sales tax revenue right now. So in any event, uh, just so I'm clear, what was voted on by the board for this new marketing position is not going to happen because there's a, a hiring freeze. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And also, I did want to clarify that should that move forward in any capacity, um, I believe my request was actually that that person would be dedicated to community, to civic engagement, not for marketing, because we've already got folks working on marketing. So I just wanted to be clear with David Eatman about that and also with Andrea. So that was okay. Michael. Just, just, Michael. Just cause, Michael. Just because I wasn't at the last meeting. So, okay. Um, and, and okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, All yes, right. sir. Thank you for answering that. I was just going to say that 35 million that we're anticipating from Wake Transit is that quarter cent uh, 
percent uh, sales tax on that contract we just approved. Remember I'm that sorry, now. What was the uh, I'm talking to Mike. I'm talking over you and going to Michael and just telling him that the money that we had in our budget in March anticipated a full, fully funded quarter percent sales tax. No, uh, Danny, this is Nathan Spencer. That's already been funded, and uh, it's part of the FY21 recommendations to move forward with the BRT. Um, so, as, so that money, so that sales, those sales tax dollars have already been paid. They're, they're already realized. They're already put over in reserve. Yeah. Um, there are a whole Nathan, lot of other projects that are not. Don't, Nathan, don't you mean FY20, not 21? Or do you mean 21? No, that, that we've already pulled the money over for FY21 in anticipation. So that money is already funded. We are we are set for BR, the $28 million for uh, BRT. There are a whole lot of other things, including Glenwood 6 and uh, other routes that will not get funded through the Wake Transit Plan. However, BRT is still moving forward at this time. They still have that's and that I was, was just going to say, the HNTB contract, we do already have funding in place for that. That funding was already um, programmed. Yeah, and, and uh, that uh, that recommendation was through CAMPO and TPAC. So they are making that recommendation. Uh, that plan is actually going to the ground tomorrow as uh, is on our screen right now, and then we'll go through June. So the... So was it TPAC that decided not to move forward with Glenwood? Because I've missed out on all that. Uh, I think it. I think it may help if we talk through the weight transit plan process a little bit. Um, I think that'll help answer some of some of your questions, okay. Karen. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, um, we are also in the FY21 budget development process for the weight transit plan. Um, on your screen, you will see upcoming dates for the budget review and approval process. Um, and as you will note, on May 15th, tomorrow, um, CAMPA will release the FY21 work plan for the 30-day public comment period. Um, and again, the goal for this process is to have an, adopt, have an adopted work plan in place before the end of the June 30th fiscal year. Um, and now just to talk a little bit about the weight transit plan, I'm going to provide an overview from a financial perspective. Um, and I think as you've been looking at, that budget detail is included at the bottom of that two-page budget detail in your agenda packet. Mm -hmm. um, a little later in the meeting, David Walker will, however, talk about the work plan in more detail as far as um, specific projects. Um, so COVID-19 has also had a very significant impact on the weight transit plan financial model. And again, this has introduced a lot of uncertainty. Um, as you know, the majority of revenue that is used to fund weight transit plan initiatives is derived from sales tax revenue. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, the business community has been greatly affected, um, which in turn affects the amount of revenue available to fund weight transit projects. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result, um, all of the providers have agreed to take a very conservative approach in budgeting for next year. We all reevaluated our budget request um, after the COVID outbreak to determine what funding was really needed at July 1st. Um, so funding that was needed at July 1st was programmed as part of the FY21 work plan. However, requests that had some flexibility as far as timing have been put into reserve, and that's applicable for all of the providers, um, to be revisited during FY21 for potential funding once we have more information related to our revenue projections revenue specifically um, for, ta mm -hmm. for sales tax. Mm -hmm. um, so programmed in the FY21 work plan is continuing support of existing positions and bus operations. So you will see that reflected in the FY, FY21 requested amount in your agenda packet. And there's also That's that 63% million. that uh, Karen was talking about, huh? Sarah Prado. And there's also $28.2 million has for, left the for, meeting. BRT, for BRT. So I think that now wraps up the capital planning? summary. Are there capital any questions? What's the capital planning that wasn't uh, 
uh, we didn't do it in um, 20, but now we're asking for it in um, 21. What's up with that? So the capital planning is related to um, budget requested for a survey, and I think David Walker will talk more about that um, specifically um, during his his presentation. And one more thing, I, I, the, what Karen was talking to you about earlier, that 63% in the administration fee from 675 to 1.1, you know, and I think Karen, with the point she was trying to make, was that if we had a budget freeze, why are we carrying this uh, increase over if we, in fact, have a budget free, uh, a, uh, you know, a hiring freeze, if you will? How did that get to get past that hiring freeze? I'm so, just the FY... curious. Mm -hmm. so right now we are in the middle of the approval process for those positions. So um, fingers crossed we're able to actually fill those positions during FY20. I'm talking about FY21. So, so, with that, so I was just going to say with that being said, we do have to put that money in the budget. So if that approval, um, if, that, if those requests are approved, we actually have funding to um, pay for those positions. <clears throat> Michael, you know, whenever we do meet, we need to talk about this. But anyway, I'm keep on, Ms. Tucker. Well, Are I, there any other questions? I, um, I'll just say that um, I, I think we're all at a bit of a disadvantage. The Finance Committee hasn't had a chance to meet. So we're getting a lot of information put in front of us in in a short order, in a period when all things have changed really quickly. So I'm um, I'm agreeing with Danny that we need to have opportunity soon to get back together so we can understand all of these other things you're showing us a little bit better. I will. Um, I just want to you know mention that the version in your packet is very similar to what was received in March. Um, there have not been any significant changes except for related to the revenue assumptions um, and the weight transit. But I'm thinking what we're saying is that if we were going to, if we're having a hiring freeze, maybe that hiring freeze should have been uh, reflected in the FY21 requested instead of it being uh, 1.10265. It should have been 675 plus whatever adjustments you make for COLA or whatever else that you have to make. But you know, you're, you're, um, you're going up quite a bit of money there and we're supposedly having a hiring freeze. Uh, to do, uh, So other departments, you know, other depart if every department plays that same numbers game, how does the city balance its budget if it has less money to deal with? The hiring freeze is in place. However, the city does recognize that there are some positions that um, are more urgent or need it sooner. And so because of that, they have put a process in place where departments are able to request that those positions be filled. And so both of the positions that are currently vacant that are funded through Wake Transit are currently in the middle of that approval process. But those two positions make up $500,000? It's those two positions and in addition, um, there is a annual escalation rate that is automatically added to positions in order to account for the fact that positions are more expensive um, each fiscal year uh, to account for increases in health insurance and um, things like that. To the tune of $500,000? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Where is the austerity in this all, all this? That, 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 that's a hard pill to swallow, uh, Ms. Tucker, but I know this is not the time or the place, but that's a very I'll hard pill to swallow. So can I say, I'll, 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 I don't mean to interrupt you all, but it's very hard for us to sit here in a meeting and have you all throw things at us and tell us that we need to vote on them right now. And we haven't, and that's basically what this whole meeting has been so far, from the budget, and now we got questions. And whether we have questions or not, we need to just vote for it. To the contractors, whether we got questions or not, we need to just vote for it. Whether this happened, whether you got questions or not, just vote for it. Like understand the position we're in. But our, but that doesn't change the position that that we've been in. This is a consistent thing. This COVID nineteen has only made things a little bit worse, and that includes for the people that we serve. 
And that includes for the position that we're sitting in right now. So, I mean, I get what's going on and I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't envy staff, you know what I'm saying? And I know it's been two weeks in, I mean, two months in of us being quarantined, but this is a kind of a hard space for you all to throw things in our face and say, vote now. And I get some of us are just willing to vote regardless of the discussion, but some of us actually have feelings in this and are wanting to have a discussion about what's going on to make sure that the RTA is run properly and not just checking boxes. Ma Madam Chair, is, is this an action item or information? Yeah, everything that we've been doing, like this is the last action item, but so far, the budget is an action item. The contractors were an action item. The 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 AD uh, the ADA contractor was an action item, and all of this is stuff that we haven't had a chance to discuss at all. And we're expected to just say yes to everything, and that's actually not fair. Which is goes back to what Danny was saying before, and I'm not trying to go on a, a you know a, anything here, but that goes back to what Danny was saying before. This is the time where things slip through the cracks. This is the time where we're not paying attention to stuff, and they just say vote yes because you know. You, You've been stressed and we're stressed and we just got to get this passed and we don't have a chance to figure out what's going on. And then down the line, we say, well, we voted on that and we have no idea what was happening. If I might, this is Nathan Spencer. If I might, uh, when is city council supposed to be addressing budget, Ms. Tucker? Uh, so the city manager proposes the recommended budget on Tuesday. And after that, um, throughout the month of June, there are a series of meetings and work sessions to uh, finalize the budget before June, before June 30th. Okay, this is Nathan Spencer again. Is it possible for us to say to the city council that we're not ready yet um, to uh, provide that budget because we don't, we have to look at it and actually explore it? I'm not as familiar with that process. Um, I'm going to look to David to provide some guidance on that. So uh, again, unprecedented times we're in. Um, and uh, as far as the budget cycle goes, um, it is a legal requirement to have a balanced budget by July 1 um, as part of that process. Uh, again, as Siobhan stated, um, we try to get the budget before uh, the transit authority uh, in advance so that uh, you all can, um, you know, go through that process. Uh, the budget that is in your package is pretty much the same thing that was in March, except for the two exceptions of the revenue items that, uh, that she described. Um, so uh, I think that um, in committee, uh, it was reviewed, it was reported to the Transit Authority, and the Transit Authority held that last meeting because of you all wanted to review it one more month. Um, and I know that obviously uh, been many uh, activities uh, since that time period uh, that we've all been dealing with. Um, from a technical standpoint of an approval process from the, uh, from the Transit Authority, um, I would have to uh, look through code and, and try to develop an answer for that that I don't have at the moment. Um, we will be required, the city will be required to move forward with a balanced budget in some form uh, because that is, again, that is a legal requirement. Um, where all of uh, our actions in the interim fit into that, uh, uh, I would have to get back with you. From a practical standpoint of understanding what is in the budget, uh, again, we can develop a work session. Uh, everything that we do is uh, um, in public realm, uh, so we have to give appropriate notice and things of that nature if you want a special meeting, whether that's with the Finance and Policy Committee or whether that's with the full board. Uh, but we'll be happy to review uh, the actual um, city's budget in detail like we have with the Finance Committee, uh, as well as um, uh, the, you know, uh, at the full board level. Um, we'll also review the Wake Transit Plan, and David's going to go through that a little bit here in a moment. Um, the Wake Transit Plan is a little bit different than the city budget because it has its own process uh, for adoption, uh, and we actually make comment or suggestions to that process instead of actually uh, endorsing that formally. So, um, can, can I 
can I make a suggestion to to uh, and board members? Let us change the one point the one million one hundred two thousand six hundred twenty five dollars to eight hundred thousand to accommodate for the uh, normal way, uh, increases that um, Javon was talking about, and then kick it on down the paint road. And then if uh, then when they get the uh, approval for those positions later on that we can come back and amend the budget later on uh, down the road but for right now let's put something out there that makes sense I mean we're we're taking hits everything else under there is taking a hit but but that's not taking a hit I, I, you know it just it's, it's just inconsistent with, with uh, the no no new policy no new positions and so forth and so on so I move that we approve uh, well, at least that item there, because I've, I've got to go. Um, somebody's blowing a horn for me now. But uh, I, I think we should change that number down to about 800000 whatever Shimon says covers the regular cost without having uh, two new positions. And really, we all just need to apply for one of those positions, because I'm telling you, those are some well-paid positions. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I can guarantee you that that fund is, not, is more than those two positions. The funds are more than those two positions, for sure. Um, well, and again, if you want detail on that, we can break it down dollar by dollar for you. That's the type of information that we can certainly provide if you have uh, a curiosity about a particular line item. Uh, uh, so this is Karen. This is Karen Ringe. David Eatman, are you saying that we've already that the finance committee already had this budget back in March and looked at it, um, and that it hasn't really changed since then? Uh, we are, that is. Yep. Yeah, this is this is Michael. So, I think the last time we met was March. I, I've lost track of calendar time, but we yeah February. we did see it. We uh, February okay. We did see a draft. Right, whatever. And yeah. um, so my understanding was uh, there was going to be a more finalized draft, and then it was going to come to board. I'm going by memory now, but since we haven't met. You know, we haven't seen anything since the last committee meeting, so it's coming back and in this with these couple of revisions. But um, you know, it, we haven't we have not looked at it again in committee since we saw that draft back last time we met. This is uh, let me just say something. Tallulah so Page just told you something that is very important. We we we've been doing this, getting a, we've been tipping over the edge of our skis now. Ever since we uh, did that, uh, approving those route changes back in November of, of uh, 18, and uh, we've got to stay within our own headlights. You know, we we and we keep doing things that are outside our the headlights that we're casting, or however you leaning over our skis or whatever that concept is, and that's that does not help us as a board to do the things that we have to do. Now, so we we need to check ourselves. We're doing, like she said, we're doing bylaws. We have to make sure that we are covering our own selves because we are all the ones that are going to be held accountable when the things don't go right. That's all I, I got to go. Well, this is Nathan Spencer. I want to say that I agree with uh, Danny in terms of approving a uh, uh, budget that is Has left the meeting. somewhat reduced and then, um, then uh, approving an amendment at a later time if we get a waiver. Well, this is Karen. I um, I definitely agree, concur that we need to be paying attention to these things and not being given things and ha expected to just vote yes without having time. Since this is going to city council very soon. At the same time, we also have to do our own due diligence. If we were given this budget before and asked for more time to look at it, we should have done that too. Um, I'm uncomfortable just throwing out a number without any prior knowledge of what is actually in that administration budget and what's required, not just for those two positions, but other things. And those are the kinds of questions we should be asking in the finance committee. Um, Karen, so if I may, it's my, it's Michael. Go ahead. So the last time we looked at the draft budget, nobody had any inkling of what was going to happen. Speaking of the pandemic, so you know the world has changed since we saw the last draft. We have not had a chance to think about it or look about look at it in that context. So I just want to say it's not that we haven't looked at it or thought about it, but we're in a whole different situation now, and time has passed, and we have not had a chance to. 
Uh, is there a way that we can, and I hate to do this again because it's been pushed, but we, we, A, can we start back to having our committee meeting next month? Or I guess having a special meeting if we need to before city council needs to vote on this on the second. Is this something that we can at least put into a special committee, this vote and table it for today so that we can fully get information like everybody said, times have changed. You know, our headspace has been a different thing. And that change in time should affect this budget. And we should be able to understand what those changes are. So is there a way that we can maybe have a special meeting um, where we can look through the budget, understand it, and then push to vote? Does this need to, you said that this could go to city council in July? Uh, no, I guess the council will approve the budget in June. Um, the, the thing about the budget process is we don't know exactly when council will approve that. Um, so, uh, again, uh, we will do our best to uh, provide you with any information uh, that you would like. Uh, certainly, we can provide details on any of the line items uh, within the budget uh, in a breakdown. Um, if you just, uh, again, let us know what those are. Um, as far as approval, um, if you want to meet again at an earlier date in June, uh, we can work on that uh, and try to make that happen. Uh, certainly, um, uh, if we're looking at committee meetings, generally our committee meetings are at the end of the month or the fourth week in the month. Um, these processes like we're in today do take uh, a lot of resources outside of just transit. Uh, so we'll have to make sure that those are available because those are beyond our control. So um, we will be able to get back with you with an answer on that. Um, I would say early next week. David, this is Nathan Spencer. Um, is it possible for us to um, uh, uh, make a recommendation to send a draft budget to the city council for their their consideration and then further sit down and meet and talk about the budget and then send them a more final version in June before they make their final vote? Wouldn't that make uh, it a little more confusing? Like if we sent them a budget and sent them this draft budget and then we work on it and then send them a new one, like wouldn't that make it a little more confusing and then maybe city council votes on one by mistake instead of the other one? So is it possible that we can get the sit down out the way? Well, or get the information? There is public hearing. I mean, so can't we just provide our own comment as part of the public hearing? Because they don't actually f approve the final budget until the public hearing happens. Well, I agree. This is Nathan. I, I agree with uh, Pat Lupe uh, that we should have our process. I just, I'm worried that uh, staff has to move forward with a budget and they're going to send this budget whether we vote or not because they have to provide something to the city council. Is that the case? Uh, uh, David, can you tell us uh, what Nathan's saying is the case or if we have, how much time, how much space do we have to review this before it goes, for us to come back together and review this before it goes to city council, before you all send anything, let me say that. How much time do we have for us to come back and review this before you all send anything to city council? Um, I would assume that, uh, and, and I have no idea of uh, when council will uh, adopt the final budget in June. Um, I do know that they have their first meeting on the second, uh, and then obviously two weeks later they have their uh, their next meeting, and they have uh, periodic work sessions in between those meetings, uh, which things could also be approved. Um, we would certainly always want to try to have some type of consensus or, or at least recommendations um, uh, as we move forward through that process uh, before then. Uh, again, uh, if we want to try to convene something to just review the budget, um, staff will be happy to set that up. I don't know logistically when that will be and what format that would be um, currently, but again, I can find that out early next week and get that out to the full body for your uh, consideration. I think that that's a great way to move forward. Um, if there are there, and, uh, may I make a do, uh, may I make a uh, pose a motion for us to do that for us to take a um, break, get with staff, let staff uh, set up some time and get back to us early next week on when we can move forward, like when we can chat about this, and then in that 
meeting, go ahead and make the vote and move forward. Um, what I would request is that uh, in, out of any information that you currently have, please forward as questions so that we can frame those um, with uh, information before that meeting and get that to you in advance of that meeting if possible, as well as the last meeting is we would love to get that done the last week of this month, if at all possible, um, yeah. so that we, you know, we get that completed um, in May. So uh, again, we'll be in touch next week regarding the next steps uh, in the interim. Please let us know if you have specific questions. If there's additional detail you need, please let us know that as well, uh, and uh, we'll we'll make sure that you get that and receive that next week, uh, heading in so that we're as we head into the last week of this month that we're well prepared. Does that sound okay? No, that sounds very yeah. fair. Thank you. And I, and I hope everyone is. I hope everyone's going to commit to being part of that meeting. If they're going to go to the effort to set it up, we need to show up for that meeting. Well, that was my question, David. This is Nathan. If uh, we have enough members, and what uh, is that five uh, that attend that meeting and then vote, we don't need a separate vote from the board separately, correct? Um, we would, but due to public. Um, uh, record or just you know public notification we would treat this as a special meeting of the full board so we wouldn't treat it as a committee meeting we would be advertising this as a special meeting of the full board uh, we would give proper notification um, and then proceed so I would propose that that, will, that gives us ultimate flexibility and as you stated as long as you have uh, five members of the total 11 available um, you would meet quorum because we currently have nine full members and two alternates, and alternates can perform as full members if there's not a quorum. I second how Luke, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the chair's uh, motion. It's been moved. Are there any questions? All right, it's been moved and properly seconded. Uh, go through the roll. One moment. All right, Nathan Spencer. Aye. Karen Ridge. Aye. Michael Stevenson. Aye. Daniel Coleman. He left. Okay. Morris Cook. Aye. Joshua Gill. Aye. Uh, Sarah Prado. Oh, well, she's an alternate. Alternate. I don't think that she. I don't think her and Robert are here. Uh, Tolula Pay and Mokai. My vote is I as well. And that covers actually all of us. So the motion passes for us to have a special meeting, um, a special RTA meeting, sometime before this month is out. So for us to get a better understanding of the budget, so that we can make a recommendation to City Council in that meeting. All right. So the and next David, or could somebody uh, just reach out to us uh, to uh, so we can respond to an email if we have specific questions that you can be readying answers to? Uh, send us a... That's definitely. Okay, thanks. All right. So that closes out our staff information. I, I mean, our action items, and that brings us into our staff information items. We've moved the wake transit plan. Uh, are we, is this going to be a, okay. So is this something that we need to discuss now too? Or is this something that we discussed what we just moved before the end of the month? I think uh, we've hit most of it. Um, if you would like for me to, uh, I can just flip through the slides just so you're aware. Um, you'll also have the presentation available um, that was sent out to you, the link to the presentation. Uh, so certainly if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but we're going to do a super abbreviated flip through, um, and, and I can do that, or Mr. Walker, if you would like, that's up to you. I, I'll let David Walker just flip through it very quickly, um, maybe two to three minutes. Good evening, David Walker, Transportation Transit Division. Um, again, as just mentioned, most of the information we were going to talk about here on these next these two slides. Meetings, they go on forever. <laughs> we, we've been talking about extensively. Uh, can you hear me? You can't hear me? Okay. So, yeah. um, good. 
So, so basically, let's just get down to the, the meat of it. The, there's big differences between the draft plan that was released in January and the recommended plan that Mr. Spencer mentioned up previously that will be posted tomorrow for public review by Campo. Uh, we had quite a few projects that were put into unbudgeted reserve status. Uh, what you see on this screen are a couple of projects that are moving forward. The 21 Carolee we've already talked about. We you set the public hearing date for that in, in June. Uh, we have been recommended to receive the $28 million for matching funds for our uh, federal CIG grant application. And we have um, been recommended to receive the 157K for uh, transit division office space. And, and that is a part of that admin budget increase that we were, we were talking about previously. We were trying to figure out where that additional admin cost came from. The one other thing, just since we're talking about that, in FY20, we had two positions that were only funded for six months. And then in 21, there's funding for the entire year. So that's an additional huge increase, but only because the $20 were for half a year versus a full year. So there's you know, there, there's line items that we can bring back to you and show you uh, why that increase is, looks like the way it does. Um, so again, care leaves moving forward, the BRT funding's moving forward, the transit division office space is moving forward. We failed to get uh, $75,000 uh, that was approved on this slide, but uh, we requested 75000 to assist in uh, a community-wide survey that is required by FTA. It's got a, a origin destination uh, model, modeling and survey. And I apologize, I'm not that up to uh, date on all the uh, facets that, that are involved in that. That's Morgan Simmons' project. But uh, we do have 75000 there. Uh, this table represents the projects that do move forward and those that have been put into reserve. Uh, one side note, the first line shows 396000 for Carolee. That should be two fifty. Uh, they They just incidentally typed the original request versus what got approved. So if you have any questions on this, I'll be glad to take your questions. The center column is what was approved. The right side, the last column, is what's been placed in the, the unbudgeted reserve until this fall when we start seeing those sales tax receipts come in and we can make some adjustments based on how much revenue we do know that we're receiving. Mr. Walker, when is when will we know those numbers and what does that look like? When do those numbers come in? It will be the second quarter of FY21. The sales tax receipts are three months in arrears, and so we won't have any idea until I think it's late August, September, what those sales tax uh, dollar receipts will look like. And David, is this we're basically we're still talking about the future as opposed to money lost for this fiscal year, right? Yeah, all that. That, that's correct. All monies that have been programmed since the inception of the Wake Transit Plan are fully funded. Uh, the, the Budget and Finance Committee for the TPAC has uh, very minimal concerns about con being able to continue all of our current projects. And they are even funding some new projects for 21 because we know sales tax receipts aren't going to just stop 100%. We know they are going to be reduced. Uh, so that's why the reduction and, and putting most of our projects in the unbudgeted reserve. The projects that are moving forward are time sensitive or have very specific needs uh, due to ridership and uh, comments that we've received you know, throughout the January public comment period. Is anyone making projections about what people will expect to have lost? I, I just, I mean, it's, uh, just, just it's ballparking it to be able to make some plans for the future. There, there are projections out there. I don't have any of those with me here today, but uh, uh, they are, you know, that is being monitored very closely. Our the city's finance and budget department is, is doing that. Wake County's finance and budget department is doing that, and 
I'm confident that the numbers we've been given to move forward with are there's going to be revenue for those. They are scrutinizing the receipts and, and the projections for those receipts very closely. Uh, Mr. Walker, this is Nathan again. Uh, just a clerical note: uh, the seventy-five thousand is not included in the uh, last line totaling the uh, the amount for capital. Yes, I, I did notice that too. The the totals at the bottom aren't aren't adding up correctly, but well, we certainly will get that correct. I think this may be a screenshot from a larger table, and it, it just doesn't incorporate all of the specifics. Uh, the totals don't respect, reflect everything that's in these uh, plans. That 13 million on the top part of the table probably also includes all of the go triangle, go carry, go wake requests, and not just the Raleigh requests. Good point. Any other comments on the work plan? If not, we'll uh, can move on to the next agenda. All right, the next agenda item being COVID-19 updates. All right, so uh, uh, I think this is uh, the last staff information item. Um, we did want to provide a, uh, a brief update, obviously, of, uh, of where we are um, uh, as far as, as, as it relates to COVID-19. Um, we've been pushing out a lot of information uh, to the board as well as to the general public on our efforts to ensure safety, uh, most importantly for um, our uh, employees and certainly for the general public at large. and. Um, uh, those continue uh, to date in full force. Everything that we have uh, implemented uh, still remains in effect. Um, that includes uh, protective equipment for all of our, uh, our workers, um, whether that's fixed route or paratransit. Um, we're still uh, in a suspended fair state, um, and we don't know exactly when we will be heading out of that suspended fair state. Um, we are uh, using rear door boarding, um, but however, any person uh, with a disability that needs to use the front door ramp on fixed route buses is certainly allowed to do that. Um, we are performing health checks at our facilities uh, to make sure that employees um, answer some basic questions about travel, as well as um, making sure that uh, we do those temperature checks, uh, which are pretty common in public facilities currently. So uh, these efforts, again, are ongoing, um, and uh, we are awaiting um, a time when we can uh, change, quite honestly, but we don't have those uh, dates at hand. Um, we do know that we will be moving to a higher level of service or back to a more normal, I'm not going to say normal, but a more normal level of service. Uh, before many of our safety precautions are removed. Um, the reason for that is as we look towards a what, I, what everyone is uh, calling a stage two now, the governor's stage two, um, we will obviously have more riders boarding our vehicles as, things, as uh, stores open up, as lives start returning to a little bit of normalcy. I'm not going to say normal, but they start getting there uh, a little bit closer to a daily routine, uh, certainly our ridership's going to be picking back up. Um, we're doing a weekend level of service currently, and our weekend level of service um, won't be able to handle that increased capacity at a uh, sufficient level, um, especially with our reduced bus capacity currently. Um, hopefully everyone's aware that um, we do have social distancing on all of our vehicles, uh, so we have uh, seats blocked off. Um, uh, normally, a 38 to 40 passenger vehicle now is carrying about 16. So um, 14 to 16, depending upon the vehicle and the, and the seat configuration. Uh, so that can bring challenges. Uh, we uh, deploy tripper buses and other mechanisms to make sure that we uh, 
keep those vehicles at those required capacities and that social distancing in place. Uh, so again, as we, uh, as, as we look forward, um, while I can't give you dates at this time, I did want to let you know that you're going to see a ramp up in services as we move forward. And then hopefully we get to points where we can start making um, very, um, what I would say, informed decisions regarding uh, some of our precautions and what may or may not be necessary. Uh, so uh, again, more information on that, uh, but I did want to give you an update. As far as uh, funding, um, uh, we also sent the board information on the CARES Act. Uh, the CARES Act did provide the city of Raleigh with approximately $25 million in funding uh, directly uh, allocated in order for us to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, as you can imagine, uh, many transit agencies nationally are experiencing as we have reduced service, uh, but we are able to uh, use those funds to help us maintain our workforce, uh, buy supplies, uh, and make the preparatory um, arrangements to keep us whole until we hopefully reach, uh, again, a, a new level of normalcy uh, not too far into the future. So um, uh, those funds uh, we are currently programming. We don't have uh, that programming yet ready. Um, we'll be coming back to the Transit Authority with information on exactly how we'll be utilizing those funds uh, in the future. Uh, so uh, stay tuned on that, and that's something that I, we can also talk as we uh, enter that new budget discussion, hopefully in the next week and a half or so. Um, again, that's my general update. Nothing real formal today, but uh, I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Eatman, is there um, any plan with the CARES Act money to provide masks for the essential uh, riders as in, uh, ridership increases? Um, the, uh, certainly we are requesting and strongly requesting that everyone uh, that rides public transportation wear a mask. Um, while we do have masks for every employee on every shift, I can't say that we're at a point that we have uh, the capacity to have one for everyone. Uh, uh, so uh, we haven't reached that level of capacity yet. Uh, certainly our primary goal is to make sure that every employee at every level has a, the ability to receive a mask at every shift. Uh, we're meeting those requirements. Um, so uh, that's kind of where we are currently. I think that as uh, supply and demand loosens up, uh, that may be something that uh, is potentially possible, but um, we would have to look to see uh, what, uh, again, um, what the capacity is there. David, it's Karen Ringe. What are, you, what are you observing in terms of those who still must ride the bus in terms of um, people wearing masks? I mean, is it most people, hardly any, half? Um, I, I'm not really prepared. <laughs> my, my apologies. I don't have an exact number for you. Uh, I certainly know that uh, we do have uh, uh, citizens that are um, uh, diligently wearing masks, and certainly you have some that, that aren't. Um, we're not in a true uh, uh, police enforcement type of activity uh, where we're going to completely refuse service for someone if they don't have a mask currently. But uh, again, all of our messaging is, is that if you're boarding a vehicle and you're going to uh, be riding, please have a mask available. I, I would say that, uh, you know, um, many are, but I, I'm sorry, I don't have a percentage. Um, uh, just an informal uh, response from staff is uh, from operations says about half of all the general public currently are making sure that they do have that mask on. Again, that's completely informal. Um, if, if we need to do something more formal, we'll be happy to try to do that. I, I was just wondering, and I'm certainly not suggesting we should refuse anybody a ride. I'm just was curious uh, what, your, what, what, what the operators are seeing. I think it's important if, um, this is to me, okay, just for the record. I think it's important uh, if we could get funds to give people like to give people like flimsy disposable ones 
um, if there is uh, money in the CARE Act for that, because some of the people that aren't wearing them probably can't find a mask or afford a mask. And then that way it closes the gap for not just taking care of the riders on the bus, but making sure our drivers are okay and kind of like quelling the spread. So if we do have any extra funds in the, you know, in that act to, I know that it may take some time with supply and demand and it's hard to find a lot of those, especially the, the kind that we could use and easily give away to people without them being like it being way, you know, way crazy expensive, but that is something that we could probably consider. Um, I, <clears throat> there's another, um, aspect um, which is um, transmission by touching and I was just in a building um, recently it's a medical research building and there's a there's a type of um, it's, a, it's like a paper but they wrapped all their door pulls with this material in this uh, it's it this this material is an antiviral um, has antiviral properties so all the door handles in this entire building were wrapped with this material. And I was just thinking that would maybe something that would be quite effective to wrap on the grab bars as well, with people hanging on to them. I, I could try to find out the name of their product, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, you certainly let us know if you come up with that and we could do a little research as well. Well, I want to say I just greatly appreciate all the extra effort of the staff to sanitize the buses. I know that's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility, and I have really appreciated um, all the flexibility that you all have been showing and trying to figure out how to make sure the buses can keep running so that people can still get around when they have no other options. Uh, I know it's a lot of effort and a lot of thinking and gone into that and and time. So thank you for, for your, your service. Yeah, that certainly goes out to our operations uh, groups uh, that are uh, out there every day and certainly um, behind the scenes every day, uh, making sure that everything's working well and it's clean and uh, everything progresses uh, along. So uh, I'll, I'll hopefully, if, put it this way, if they didn't hear it directly today, uh, we'll certainly pass that along. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you, David, for all of your hard work, all the staff, for everything you all have been doing. Um, okay, it looks like that was our last basic, I mean, basically our last agenda item. We're in performance reports, but those are in your agenda for review uh, to, to look through. Um, I know this was a heavy lift for this meeting today, um, being we're speaking in on three hours of a meeting, but we haven't been together in almost uh, probably since February. So this is kind of going on three months of us, you know, not in front of each other and engaging. So we kind of had to make this lift. So I really appreciate you all's patience um, as we went through this process. Um, and I thank staff for all your hard work in this time and, and, and being essential and showing up for the riders and for, you know, making sure that we still are able to get people where they need to go for the other essential workers that need to get around and for our ridership. So I do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, are there any last uh, closing remarks uh, from the authority members or anybody or staff before we wrap up? This is Nathan Spencer. I, I did want to say one thing, which is that um, uh, we're all going to kind of come out of this as a, as a city with uh, fewer jobs, less opportunity, and a lot of less housing, um, and a lot of other uh, needs. So our role within the transit authority, I think, is going to be a lot more important. Um, the planning for the future, the making sure service appears, uh, people are going to need us more than ever. So I'm, I'm really glad that we're together. I'm glad that we debate things. I'm glad we spend three hours talking about it because uh, we have a significant role here to uh, help. And I, I hope that everyone realizes that and uh, uh, continues to uh, stay present. And please stay healthy and safe. Thank you, Nathan. I agree. And I, I think we're going to, you know, you read in the press and on, online. Karen of... Ringe has left the meeting. <laughs> Goodbye, Karen. Um, You're kind of... A lot of dire predictions about public transportation. Uh, because of the fear of, you know, being mixed in with public. But um, 
I think we have to, um, you know, think about how we keep a pos positive messaging out there and find ways to address the the issues that are that are real without completely undermining people's confidence in our system. I agree. Thank you for that, Michael. I think uh, now more than ever, it's, it shows us how important our operators are and our engineers and, you know, all the things that we've been kind of going back and forth over not knowing that this was coming. I think it puts a lot of things into light, which is why we're so uh, when it comes to the contracts that so we want to make sure that we're taking care of not just our riders, but everyone. So thank you all. I don't know if anybody else has any comments, concerns, are all our hearts and minds clear? <laughs> and if so, I want to close this meeting at 622. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining in. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler Lupe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great one, you all. Stay safe. You too. You too.